practices at Wellington I race venue for two full days as the 20th edition of the Apsa Cape Epic reaches its halfway stage. Four days done, four to go, and in many eyes, perhaps the four most telling and uh, difficult stages of this entire journey. At the sharp end, we've got racing out of the very top draw and as close as it has ever been at the uh, top of both the men's and women's races. We're in for a fantastic day's racing today. It's the Queen stage. The day has been shortened due to the extreme temperatures, so the total for the event is now 605 kilometers with 16,050 meters of climbing. Stage four is the queen stage, meaning it is incredibly challenging and has spectacular trails. The dual tracks give way to single track, cool runnings, afterwards, the Toyota cliffhanger and Route 66 are legendary rides. They will cover 73 kilometers and climb 2,550 meters before the finish back in Wellington. For the first time on the Wellington start line, we have World Bicycle Relief, Sebastian Finney and Nino Schurter. They are three minutes, 47 seconds behind the yellow leader's jersey. Toyota Specialized 91 with Howard Grotz and Matt Beers are in second, 147 off the pace. And in yellow for the second day are Buff Megamo, Bart Allemann and Hans Becking with almost 12 and a half hours of racing in their legs. The gun goes on stage four of the 20th edition of the Apsa Cape Epic. The riders feel the pressure not only of the incredibly tight overall classification, but also of the day that is to come. With temperatures threatening to reach 40 degrees, hydration and nutrition management are going to be imperative. Today's loop out of Wellington is a classic Cape Epic stage and will for sure be a defining moment in the overall. Yesterday's winners, Canyon City with Andreas Sivolt and Mark Stutzman, World Bicycle Relief and Toyota Specialized 91 put the pressure on at the 35 kilometer mark. They make some time on the yellow jersey and by the time they reach the Seven Peaks climb, they have a 50 second gap. 
2022 Cape Epic Champions are Bea Liet Speed Company, Georg Egger and Lukas Baum are in the chasing group. They have had a mixed race so far with two difficult days and two podiums. It looks like Buff Megamar paying the price for the incredible effort on the earlier stages. Alaman, the European Marathon Champion, has been amazingly strong in the race so far, but the Cape Epic is taking its toll. 47 kilometers into the race and the three teams at the sharp end remain the same. They are working together to increase the gap to the yellow jersey. It now sits at 1 minute and 20 seconds. As the riders reach the legendary cliffhanger, they enjoy some of the best mountain bike trails in the world. Nino Schurter takes the lead with Sebastian Finney on his wheel. This is a masterclass in mountain biking. The ears and grots stay in contact, but Canyon City have burned all their matches and lose the wheel. Heading into the Wellington Race Village, it's down to World Bicycle Relief and Toyota Specialized 91. Schurter and Finney are masters of the sprint, but Beers knows this finish well and makes it as hard as possible for them. The time is taken for the second rider in the team to cross the line, so positioning is everything. Grotz and Schurter cross the line. It's a photo finish for the South African and Danish champions. The win goes to World Bicycle Relief with Toyota Specialized 91 setting for second. One minute, 10 seconds later, Canyon City crossed the line for third and in sixth place today are Buff Megamo. They have paid the price for the previous stages and are down almost seven minutes today, losing the yellow leader's jersey. The men's elite podium for stage four sees Canyon City in third, Toyota Specialized 91 in second, and today's winners for the second time in this event, World Bicycle Relief, Schurter and Finney. The yellow leader's jersey changes hands for the third time this event, Toyota Specialized 91, Beers and Grotz are the proud new owners by two minutes going into stage five. The RMX Elite Women's category has never been so hotly contested. In third are Toyota Specialized 91 with Sofia Gomez Viafan and Samara Shepard. Canadel Factory Racing, Candice Lill and Mona Mittervalna and just two and a half minutes in the lead are Ghost Factory Racing, Anna Terpstra and Nicole Kohler in the orange leader's jersey. The gun goes for stage four and the pressure is palpable. Cannondale and Toyota Specialized 91 need to put pressure on Ghost if they want to challenge the GC. The podium has looked the same every day so far. Terpstra and Kohler seem to be infallible. Gomez Viafan has wanted to up the pace for the past two stages and it's now her turn to show what she's got. Partner Shepard is getting stronger and stronger as the days go on, but whatever they do is quickly covered by the other two teams. Next, it's the turn of Lil from Canadale to stress the pace. She has been on fantastic form and really wants this one. Lil has finished second overall four times in the Cape Epic and it has become a familiar story. World Marathon champion Mittervalna isn't on top form, but she has the talent to go with Lil. They keep trying, but can't make anything stick. Ghosts have all the answers today. They control the race and lead into the legendary cliffhanger. They are silky smooth through the switchbacks, not taking any risks. All the riders look forward to this part of the course. They won't win the race in this section, but a moment's slip in concentration could be catastrophic. As the riders return to Wellington, they're all vying for position, but eventually it's Ghost Factory Racing that outmaneuver the other two teams. They play a smart game and cross the line first under four hours and nine minutes. Just two seconds behind, Canada and Specialized battle it out, and it's Gomez Yevon and Shepard that take second, with Lil and Mittervalna in third. It's a new order on the podium today. Canada Factory Racing, Mona Mittervalna and Candace Lil in third. Toyota Specialized 91, Sofia Gomez Viafan and Tamara Shepard for their first second place. And Ghost Factory Racing and Terpster and Nicole Koller have a clean sweep winning every stage so far. The current leader's jersey remains with Ghost Factory Racing. They now have just over 2 minutes and 30 seconds on second and almost 8 minutes on third. which I'm really looking forward to and of course flipping uh, and it's yep. it's infamous I've only ridden it once but it's amazing 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 I love the climb up is nice but the downhill 
It's something really special. A fitting celebration of the 20th edition of the APSA Cape Epic was the cliffhanger on the Queen stage. So we've had five days of racing and three different teams in the race leaders' yellow jerseys. The racing has been dynamic, it's been exciting and entertaining. And going into stage five, Matthew Beers, the defending champion and the 2018 champion, Howard Grotz, have a two minute lead over Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney of World Bicycle Relief. Buff Megamo. We're in the yellow jersey for two days and now in third place after enduring a really tough day and losing five minutes yesterday. Okay, we go Lucas Baum. Keep fighting, but they keep losing time as well. Sierwald and Stutzman of Canyon City inside the top five. They won uh, the stage number three in Tilbach. And Fabian Rabenstein and Samuel Liporo, well, they just mark time at the moment. In the women's race, it's been all about the Ghost Factory racing pair of Anna Terpstra and Nicole Kohler. In their debut Absa Cape Epic, they have controlled the racing and they've won all four stages plus the prologue as well. Mona Mitavala and Candice Lill are poised two and a half minutes behind to perhaps launch something over these next couple of days. Sofia Gomez Viafan and Samara Shepard hold firm in third place. They're just under an hour ahead of the Eford Private Clients holdings pair. The defending champion Vera Lossa lost to nearly an hour yesterday together with Alexis Scada and have dropped down to fifth place on the general classification in the Aramex women's race. So hello, welcome to the uh, start and finish of stage number five. This is our race village in the beautiful town of Wellington in the Wachenmachers Fallet and they are going to be exploring a very different part of the valley today from yesterday as they go up and around the Grunberg mountain which lies to the southwest of the town of Wellington. Well, down on the start line, plenty of tension with three days left to race and just less than, uh, well, two minutes in the men and two and a half minutes in the women's race. There's so much to race for over today and the remaining uh, three days or two days after this. Let's go down there and hear from the riders with Bart Brenchens. It's a short stage, uh, 70K, uh, not that much climbing, uh, 1,750. How, how important is a warm-up uh, for these stages? Because probably it goes fast in the beginning. Uh, I think it will be even more important than the other days because uh, it's short and then everybody will go full gas from the start. So uh, I will start a little bit earlier today, the warm up, to have a longer warm up and maybe a little bit more uh, intensive than the other days. Uh, what are the tactics for today? Is, is it possible to, to be on the podium? Um, I think the front racing is still so hot. I don't think they'll let any other team get in there. Um, but we'll see, anything can happen. Uh, the tactics, if you want it, with good memories from some years ago. <laughs> yeah, there it, it was raining, so it was my weather conditions. Today is a bit different, um, but I think with the fast stage, a lot of cornering, some trails, um, you have to be in the front, stay there, and then hopefully have the power towards the end. What would be the expected winning time? I mean, 70k, not that much climbing, very fast. Yeah, I think average about 25 kilometers per hour. So two hours, 45, under three hours, I think. Crazy fast. Short stage today, uh, not that much climbing. Uh, the Canyon team has two very strong teams. What, what do you have in mind? What are the tactics? Yeah, I think uh, today it looks like the first half of the stage will be really fast. Uh, so the tactic will be, again, like help the guys to hit the first trails up in the front to have a good start to be to be all together there and uh, to, to help them in the first half and I think then it will be up to them and there will be more climbing more single tracks and I think they will be again in the attack mode. George how do you feel this morning? Yeah quite well I mean uh, I think no one is uh, super fresh but uh, birthday, yeah. <laughs> congratulations yeah, actually yeah thank you 
Um, but yeah, I think we're quite good, or still good, so ready to go. On paper, I think this is the stage for you guys. Yeah, probably. Um, it's a fast stage, it cools down a bit, uh, the heat is not that much a problem. It's not too much climbing, so yeah, we'll see. And what are the tactics for today? Well, I mean, uh, with the nine minutes to the leaders, we're a bit of uh, with a back against the wall, so uh, we got to survive the first hour, I think, and then we'll see towards the end what the, what the legs still have uh, in the tank. So, back to the wall are the uh, Obeliet Speed Company pair as they charge away from Wellington. Another out and back loop in this beautiful part of the world, exploring uh, some of the finest trails imaginable. The wild boar trails will be uh, in use today and uh, plenty more. So, uh, the uh, yellow jerseys are with Matt Beers and uh, his partner Howard Grotz in the uh, Toyota Specialized 91 team. Early morning, quite cool, much cooler, and uh, predicted temperatures today, not nearly as hot as uh, the last two days, and uh, that took a serious toll in this race. If you consider that uh, yesterday's uh, stage took these uh, leading riders just about three hours and 20 minutes, the back end of the field finished well, the last rider across the line was 9 hours and 35 minutes. The last team across the line, uh, Fikili Gianni and Letejo Zulu, 9 hours and 18. That shows you how much work the amateurs are having to do to uh, get through the untamed African mountain bike race. The roller coaster was the first thing we would see. Two teams on the front and one rider uh, on his own here. So five riders. That tells you that uh, he's riding as a solo today. Johan van Sale of the Toyota Specialized team. Uh, his partner, Alex Miller, rolled off the start line and then pulled out, allowing Van Sale to ride on solo, but he does not, he's not allowed to get involved in the racing. He can just sit at the back of the group for the entire day if he so wishes. And uh, he can provide some support to his teammates, who are Matt Beers and Howard Grotz up the road. So it's all set up uh, nicely for a fantastic day's racing today. Short and sharp, Neil Gardner sits alongside me once again here. Neil, looking forward to today. Well, it's going to be another cracker day. It is the shortest uh, full-length stage of the of the week, and uh, 70 kilometers, 1,750 meters of climbing. It, it does sound like a lot in relative terms to general mountain biking, but in uh, absolute Cape Epic terms, it uh, it's as we said, it's a relatively short day, and. Uh, the riders, that's from start to finish, and you spoke about it earlier, Gerald, uh, but you touched on it a moment ago, the uh, recovery for the back markers. It's all very well. We're talking a lot about the professional riders, the top riders, the UCI registered uh, athletes, but uh, it's that uh, finish to start recovery thing, from finish to start. So some of the riders will be finishing late in the afternoon, and they have a very short time to uh, recover. So spare a thought for the amateurs, and as they... Uh, head into the latter half of the week. Uh, big challenges for them still lie ahead. Absolutely, onto the Slungrafi Road here early on. This is from earlier today. They passed through the Misha uh, Premium Vines, a, 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 a vineyard nursery, plus they produce their own wines, and of course, Val Bedacht. So earlier today, the uh, women on the uh, start line here, Candice Lil and Amona Mitevalna have kept uh, themselves very much in the hunt as they are two minutes and 31 seconds behind the Ghost Factory racing pair. Sofia Gomez Villafan and her partner there, Samara Shepard, have some work to do for the Toyota Specialized team there. Seven minutes and 56 six seconds down on Ghost Factory racing. In the uh, Absa African jerseys, Steph Walters and Daniel Stradom. Have they uh, taken that jersey the last couple of days from Sarah Hill and Haley Smith. Away the... Aramex women's uh, race roll is today a day that we might, it's short, so uh, it's, uh, it's unlikely, but uh, you feel time is starting to tick uh, on uh, rather rapidly for Cannondale Factory Racing. If Candace Lill is to break her run of four consecutive second places, they need to start doing something to put the Ghost Factory Racing team under pressure. I think more telling, in fact, that it is very true. There is uh, just a few, just a very small amount of time, but uh, that almost seems insurmountable because of the, they look like completely unbustable pairing of, uh, of Ghost Factory Racing. They have not shown a single weakness. Not one moment have they shown 
that that, uh, uh, albeit fairly small deficit, could be even, uh, even under threat. And there are, call it eight minutes, just under eight minutes separating the top three in the women's category, uh, which is the closest we've seen so far ever in the race. And very at this stage, at this stage mm -hmm. in the race, definitely. And at this uh, at this point, uh, still anything can happen. And we did hear from Candice Little yesterday that they will never give up. They will continue putting as much pressure as they can on the Ghost Factory racing team. Uh, so far, no weakness shown, but uh, they will keep fighting until the very end. So the uh, Aramex uh, women's race uh, rolling off couple of minutes behind our elite men as they explore the beautiful trails on the slopes of Grunberg here in Wellington today. Well, Mona Mittenwaller just jumping to the front there on uh, the first section of single track, the roller coaster and uh, Mittenwaller of course a uh, World Cup winner twice last year. She's only 22. She's won uh, two marathon world titles already. Massively mature for a young uh, 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 22 years uh, of age. And of course, she's got a very experienced partner in Candace Lill on the front here. Experienced uh, across all facets of the sport, but particularly here at the Absa Cape Epic. And she's showing it this year by managing those trails. The Velbedacht Farm belonging to uh, Skulk Berger and his family. That was the uh, position of the first water point at around 27 kilometers. That is the uh, route map today. Grunberg is that mountain around which they will go back into the Boerflei Valley, Valley, the Dulov trails. Uh, some fantastic trails they're going to be exploring today. Absolutely a gorgeous day for, uh, for all mountain bikers. Not quite as hot. We saw the weather predictions were not quite as high in, into the 30s. In fact, almost hitting 40 at one point in Wellington, and they'll be uh, they'll be looking forward to those trails like we spoke about earlier. The uh, highlight of the day for many of the mountain bikers every single day is the Toyota Tough section. But before they get there, they have the roller coaster, Velbeduct, and they climb up Lacelung and the Happy Hog. And Happy Hog is one of the uh, local favourites of the trail, and. Uh, the Toyota Tough section. The Golden Mile is the highlight of the day. Absolutely lovely uh, trail that will bring them down towards the finish to the Bossman family uh, vines and then uh, to the finish in Wellington. These are trails that are enjoyed by uh, mountain bikers all around the country, but particularly here in the Western Cape, part of the Wild Boar uh, Trail Network that uh, encompasses around the 50 kilometers of today's stage, let alone uh, uh, all the other trails in the in the region, but a uh, beautiful day out 70 kilometers 1750 meters of climbing and a three sprocket uh, day today by Absa Cape Epic standards a relatively relatively easy stage Well, beautiful conditions today for the riders to explore the uh, trails, the wild boar trails and so many more here in the Wellington area as they make their way up the mountain uh, on the slopes of Grunberg Mountain. The uh, decomposed granite uh, providing wonderful uh, terroir for growing wine. The peak of this uh, mountain, incidentally, 922 meters. So nothing like uh, the, the peaks and the massive uh, mountains they climbed yesterday. But uh, there's enough challenges. There's very little flat. There's almost nothing flat today except for the field that they're rolling out of and into at uh, the CPUT uh, campus. So the lead group has uh, finally seemingly established itself. The yellow jerseys are in here. So are World Bicycle Relief and uh, Canyon City in this uh, group as well. So the team uh, that uh, are missing here are Buff Mega Mode, seemingly not in this group. So they are snaking along the uh, trails, heading out towards the uh, the Boerflei area and uh, Dulov around uh, the sort of, uh, if you like, the uh, east, uh, southeast uh, uh, ridge of the Hrunberg mountain. There's a team just looking as though they're trying to latch on earlier today. The uh, 
Bulls Mavericks, Simon Schneller and Ushubu were in this group. So was Singer Racing, Simon Steve John and Jakob Hartmann looking to keep themselves uh, in the frame. But uh, you can bet that they'll be highly, highly motivated will build World Bicycle Relief and uh, Nino Schurter putting himself uh, right where he wants to be on the front of this race to try and put, take some of that time back. Two minutes on the Toyota Specialized 91 pair of Matt Beers and uh, Howard Grotz. They've yet to win a stage in this race, but they have the yellow jerseys. So uh, they are in the prime position. The Bulls are still there, it seems, uh, in that, that group, but I don't think the Singer Racing pair are any longer in the group. We can see Nino Schurter once again at the front, pushing the pace. And on overall general classification, Nino Schurter and um, Sebastian Finney are two minutes, exactly two minutes, behind Toyota Specialized 91 World Bicycle Relief are the team of Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney. Buff Megamo on overall general classification are five minutes and three seconds back, and Obier Leard Speed Company, nine minutes 33. And in the fifth slot, Canyon CD at 11.36. You did expect a lot from the Canyon CD team. The CD team, they won stage uh, three and uh, were third on stage four. So they have had a great performance. It, it looked promising in the latter half of the race. But uh, I think 11 minutes is quite a big gap to make up, especially with the dense field that we see in the, in the men's category especially with uh, the close racing between World Bicycle Relief and Toyota Specialized 91. Nino Schurter will be wanting to put as much pressure on his rivals. And he'll be looking back to Howard Grotz. He, uh, you could arguably say the non-cross-country specialist and uh, putting pressure on him on these trails. Sebastian Finney, a more than worthy partner to Nino Schurter as they head through these trails. And we are going to be getting some information from the trails out to you. To, under, just to understand what the uh, what the group composes of. We haven't seen Buff Megamo yet, and also notably absent is the pairing of Egger and Baum. Yes, uh, Gail Gegger celebrating his 29th birthday today. He's not, uh, by uh, looks of it, having a particularly happy day up there because he's missed the, uh, the group here. Bulls Mavericks at the back, then Canyon City, and then uh, the split of uh, Toyota Specialized 91 and uh, World Bicycle Relief. Buff Megamo were in this lead group going through the uh, water point at Linton Park Wine Farm at 33 kilometers. Uh, since then, they have been dropped. The uh, uh, Obea Leard Speed Company were hanging on to the back of that group, and they've also been distanced. Uh, so the gap starting to appear as the pressure starts to mount in the general classification with World Bicycle Relief. Schurter and Finney trying to uh, put the yellow jerseys under some uh, form of pressure here. But uh, it's going to take some work today. It's a short stage by Absa Cape Epic standards, just on 70 kilometers and uh, 1,700 meters of climbing. Canyon City have really ridden themselves into this race after a slowish start. Andreas Sivolt and Mark Stutzman have got stronger and stronger. They had that great stage win, the Witzenberg Valley stage in uh, Tilbach that uh, set them up and uh, they had lost a lot of time on general classification early in the race so they are on the back foot in terms of uh, general classification but uh, they'll be enjoying the fact that they are now able to mix it and stay with the lead group for as long as possible in fact yesterday they were early aggressors up the uh, climb towards the cliffhanger they were distanced and then got themselves back onto that group but then distance again on the descent Blue gum forests as they uh, snake their way through these forests. We might not be able to see them all the way through as they head down to uh, Boer Flame. Chance now to introduce uh, our third uh, guest uh, or third commentator alongside us here. Wonderful to have uh, back with us, uh, Sabine Smiths. Morning. Good morning, Gerald, and uh, good morning, Neil. Yeah, I'm also happy to be back here on air. And uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts on today's uh, stage? You, you'll be familiar with the trails as well. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's a short stage yeah, in, in general. And uh, it normally also it give, gives a bit of um, opportunities for for teams where you, yeah, which maybe not uh, top in the, in the general classement to maybe make a move. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's also after the the longer and hot days it's uh, it's of course it's a bit more pleasant uh, so this morning and 
and I guess also for the riders. So we, we're going to have like a bit of break in today's uh, stage. A little more forgiving today after some very, very punishing days in terms of the terrain and the heat. And uh, the conditions have been really, really tough over those first few days. As they've got on 20 kilometers to go, elite men, they are absolutely flying through this uh, terrain. You heard Simon Stibjan uh, say uh, earlier today that uh, he thought somewhere around about 2 hours 45 for the uh, 70Ks today. Uh, he might well be uh, on the mark there. Well, by our calculations, then, they should be reaching the 51-kilometer mark very soon. And, uh, in fact, in the next uh, few minutes, we'll be able to get some time checks and do the, the all-important roll call see who are the top teams in contention at the moment and also who uh, and who's the who, who's in that chase group and of course what the gap is and who's losing time today but certainly not losing any time today in fact looking to gain time back on their toyota specialized 91 rivals looking to reclaim that yellow jersey is world bicycle relief nino shirt and sebastian finney but in very close attendance matt beers with Howard Grotz also in close attendance. Sebastian Finney in the front group. And we did notice that the Bulls, Mavericks, Simon Schneller and Urs Huber having a fantastic day out. They looks like looks like they've handpicked today as a possible possible stage. Yeah, so this is what, what That's I the point you made, yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. But just in a way like teams you haven't seen uh, previous on the previous days that they may be just also trying to, to find or to get the luck today and uh, make a move and maybe hop on this on the podium. Dulof uh, Wine Estate in the Boer Flay Valley, 380 hectare farm, 40 hectares under vine, and uh, they produce some wonderful uh, whites, Chardonnays, and Sauvignon Blancs. A full range of reds here as well. And uh, those whites grown on those eastern slopes of Grunland, uh, Grunberg. Uh, these riders not stopping to taste the wine, I'm afraid, today, because uh, they are on their way just grabbing bottles and heading up uh, the uh, trail out of the uh, Dulof Wine Estate. It is a focal point of the uh, trails uh, network here is Dulof and not far away. Belvin Pass Farm, the old Belvin Pass Farm belonging to the Retiefs, is uh, just next door. That's where they're heading up into the uh, the Boerflow Valley a little bit and then uh, doing a little loop and coming back. Not unfamiliar to them. They went in a similar direction two days ago when they came from uh, Saronsburg, headed up uh, on the other side of the, uh, the trail. Yeah, so the, the true grid, that was just a quite rough. It's not a, a, a steep downhill, but it works you quite a bit um, because it's like quite rough un underground surface. Um, but these riders were already through, and um, uh, the ladies will still have to come through that uh, true grid. All sitting up at the moment, just taking on uh, and eating. A little uh, truce observed after that water point, just giving uh, the riders an opportunity to, uh, to feed. Y you get the sense, Neil and Sabine, that perhaps today is maybe going... Uh, We've got two massively tough stages coming up after this. We've had the Queen stage yesterday. Today, just maybe um, a percent or two off that real red-hot racing uh, pace. Yeah, I, I see it that it's a, like a, a, a stage where you, the riders try a bit to just breathe and uh, to, in a way, to gain a bit some um, some strength and some uh, like energy back before it goes uh, tomorrow and into the red zone <laughs> into the, and the weekend uh, yeah so again i mean the junkers hook uh, junkers hook uh, um, stage it's quite a tough one um which works the riders because i think they almost didn't left one trail out in junkers hook that comes on the very final day the grand finale a rather different grand finale to uh, previous years here when we start and finish in stellenbosch and, and it's actually quite a tough a tough uh, uh, grand finale stage probably the toughest i think they've ever had um if you think about it it really is uh, going to be a demanding stage well uh, it's no procession that's for yep. sure and we have seen in the past uh, shorter day on the grand finale in fact even a later start time on the grand finale as the riders rolled into the likes of Lawrenceford and previously Valdevi to uh, different grand finale. And Stellenbosch still has uh, it is a bit of heritage because Stellenbosch did host the very first grand finale in 2004. Just a quick look back at the split times that we've just been through. We just went through the dual half section at 51 kilometers. 
and uh, Toyota Specialized 91, World Bicycle Relief, Canyon City, and Bulls Mavericks all together at the top four teams. We see there in Singer Racing and Buff Megamo. Buff Megamo also not, well, not on a good day today and having lost time yesterday, their hopes of overall look to be dashed. Yeah, they were, they were pretty um, philosophical yesterday. Uh, they, they realized they weren't up uh, to stay with the red hot pace up at the top, going in uh, to the, the 11, 12 kilometer climb up to the, the uh, top of the cliffhanger. So they just uh, rode their own pace. Urs Huber sitting at the back of this group. Uh, Shimon Sneller, his partner, just up at there. There, Urs so vastly experienced, a former winner, of course, of the Absa Cape Epic and uh, very much looking for uh, some redemption here for the Bulls Mavericks to see if they can uh, pull something out and win a stage today. Huber winning, winning the race with Karl Platt. Karl Platt's uh, fifth and final victory in Urs Huber's first in 2016. And just uh, we are highly aware of the fact that there's a big battle going on between Toyota Specialized 91 and the World Bicycle Relief for first place. Those are the first and second place teams. Third place overall, that third place overall slot on the podium at the grand finale is still wide open because we see Buff Megamo losing time at that time check. They have, uh, they are around about one minute 40 back. And if you look at the overall general classification, they are lying in third currently. And uh, with Orbia, Leeds Speed Company, nine minutes at 33. So around about four and a half minutes behind them. But Canyon CD are breathing down their necks. Canyon CD could well be in contention for that third spot overall. This is Buff Megamo with Vart Alleman on the front and uh, Hans Becking on his wheel. The Singer Racing uh, riders are just behind them. Simon Stibjan and uh, Jakob Hartmann. The gap starting to appear after the early uh, phases of this stage. Uh, were, were perhaps for longer than uh, we've seen at any other stage, they uh, remain together, but now the gaps are starting to appear. We haven't seen any sign of the... Uh, let's do a quick refresh of the results we haven't seen any sign of the orbia speed orbia liet speed company team yet coming through we've seen orbia we've seen william vittoria factory coming through and uh, the team of bo martin and munoz moreno and buff megamo to the support team the backup team of uh, hans becking and Wout alleman but still no speed company between the uh, first team going through that checkpoint and the ninth team now about making about two, uh, some uh, four minutes or so. So that's the uh, gap back. And yet, as uh, Neil said, no Orbi Elliott Speed Company. Uh, they just haven't quite been this year been in the in the type of shape and form that we saw them uh, last year and the previous year. Yeah, I, um, it's it's. Uh Sometimes also just with the, you don't know, with the preparation, how it went and uh, maybe also, um, yeah, I guess also maybe the, the pressure they had put on themselves and, uh, but it just shows you also that uh, the other teams which are now um, ahead of them, mm -hmm. that they had uh, a perfect preparation and um, the fight is, or like the competition is quite tight. So, which makes it also exciting, and uh, there is, like we saw it with also with the, the changes um, of the uh, leader jersey, that uh, you have now in a way, like over the days, we had three different uh, teams in the yellow jersey, which is uh, very exciting. It's highly competitive for sure, and we, we can see from just the visuals right now that Nina Schurter is firing in all cylinders. Matt Beers, the defending champion, and his partner Howard Gross also firing in all cylinders. Canyon CD made up of the former world champion Andreas Seewald and the current German champion and riding with the Swiss champion. Also today firing on all cylinders and uh, with so many teams in the mix and all firing on all cylinders, it does raise the level just, just an extra few percent, which can put pressure on uh, the likes of Orbia Lead Speed Company. They are losing a lot of time and we've seen them pass through that time check at five minutes and 14 seconds. Yeah. So that is five minutes and 12 seconds behind Canyon CD, who have already leapfrogged over them on overall classification, on the virtual classification, of course, is the race. If the race were to stop now, that would put Canyon CD one place up over, albeit leads. Still a long way to go though, uh, even though we are, uh, we are at 51 kilometers and 70 kilometers of the is the final 
distance of the stage, 1,750 meters of climbing, one major climb to go still. Mark, and that will take them to the Toyota Tough section, Golden Mile. Yeah, so Nino, was, Nino Schutter is now here leading this group for quite a while, but with a good pace. And uh, it seems like when we look a bit back that Urs Huber uh, has to actually already like uh, dropped a bit back and is really fighting hard and, and we could see it from the um, e-bike camera a bit earlier. So also his body language, he really um, has to fight here to stay on this group. Anyone knows how to fight in these sort of environments. It's so super. Simon Schneller hanging in there and, and uh, backing his rider, his partner, to make it to the uh, back end of this group, the lead group here. And uh, Schneller is going to go to the front to try and slow things down a little bit here and uh, bring uh, the pace down so that he can give uh, Urs Huber a chance to get to the uh, group. There he is. Urs Huber was a last minute. Uh, call up for this uh, for this race he initially wasn't going to so his preparation wouldn't necessarily have been absolutely uh, ideal uh, he is of course a winner of the race so he's uh, he's an athlete that is certainly capable of uh, winning this race but uh, you can see the level that we're uh, witnessing right now at the Absa Cape Epic in 2024 and uh, the challenge for him to get back on but he's doing a good job right now. And plus, the tactically, if we look at that group, the, everyone in that group has an agenda other than today's stage. And if the Bulls are planning on uh, stealing the stage, this is a perfect situation tactically for them because there are a few teams in this group, only four teams in the group, obviously three spots on the podium, but with four teams in the mix, three of those teams are looking to get time over their rivals on general classification. They can capitalize on that for sure. Ride on the back of it and let the uh, team of Toyota Specialized 91 World Bicycle Relief and use them to keep them keep, to keep their rivals at bay. Sensational trails riding uh, today. These uh, riders, all uh, what 1,200 uh, riders left in the uh, Absa Cape Epic this year, will uh, just absolutely. Uh, relish the opportunity to ride these wild boar trails. Peter van Veek, the man who uh, largely has been uh, responsible for putting this network today you, uh, together. Val du Chiron is the sort of base of it, and there are four different uh, uh, distinct trails you can uh, tackle between 17 and 45 kilometers around the Grunberg area. It is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and the trail we um, uh, right now riding on, uh, it's also called Dirty Dancing. And I guess under the conditions uh, where we have, uh, it's, yeah, you definitely get dirty here. Schneller just setting the pace, or rather perhaps easing the pace, uh, allowing his partner, Urs Huber, at the back of this group, a chance to sort of recover and uh, regain contact with the group. There's Simon Schneller, uh, and it's uh, Nino Schurter. Matt Beers and Howard Grotz, and then uh, Andreas Sirwald and Mark Stutzman and uh, Uber right at the back of this group. Stage is set for a thrilling final uh, to this uh, stage as they come charging down the mountain. They'll come down the uh, Golden Mile, the Toyota Tough section, which is almost uh, an erosion. Uh, slot down the, the, the mountain that they've carved a magnificent trail down and that'll be uh, super fast and great entertainment for both the riders and for us to enjoy uber still hanging on just not quite uh, in touch with uh, the back of this group 15 k's to go on the uh, stage here in Wellington. It is stage five of the Absa Cape Epic, 1,750 meters over 70 kilometers. By Absa Cape Epic standards, a relatively uh, easy stage. It's all relative though. Dusty and, and, uh, and dirty it is, this uh, trail, Savine. Yeah, and um, I mean, we have now just 15 kilometers to the finish, um, but it's not a free ride. We still have like uh, quite a climb to do, and it goes on the other side from the valley. We're climbing up again before we're dropping down into the valley bottom and have quite a similar 
finish uh, like the previous days. Yes, they'll know the finish well. It's, it, it, they uh, have uh, come through there twice now before. Piers knows these trails uh, very, very well. And uh, Howard Grotz, well, he's back into racing again. He took uh, a year out of 2019 to step away from the sport at uh, the very highly competitive uh, part of it. Went back to Durango and uh, started working with the Durango Devo, coaching uh, youngsters there. And uh, went back to some of his uh, first, well, his early uh, academic love, maths teaching uh, at uh, Howard Grotz. But it's lovely to have him back and uh, competitive at the sharp end. And at the highest level of the sport, having won the 2018 Absa Kepebek with none other than Yaroslav Kulhavi, a three-time winner and uh, now similar statured Matt Beers and similar similar levels and similar similar power must be familiar to him and on the same trade team now internationally as well they'll be racing in the United States on the gravel series absolutely fantastic in fact uh, Howard Grotz was meant to ride with the I think his first Absa Kepebek he was meant to ride with uh, James Reed back in 2016 uh, but that didn't materialize. He was then due to come back in 2019 to defend the title with Kul Harvey, and that didn't happen either. Um, so it's lovely to have him back here, and uh, Beers is thoroughly enjoying, I think, the uh, opportunity to uh, challenge for a third title alongside uh, Howard Grotz. And they are in prime position at the moment in the uh, yellow jerseys. The race is on here at uh, the Absa Cape Epic on stage number five. They just about completed the loop through the Boerflay and the Velvet Pass uh, farm. They've uh, passed out of that and are charging away along the base of the valley here. The Kromrufi they would have just crossed and they are heading up. There's a climb to do now, but uh, business end of the race now, Sabine. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's if you want to still make a move um, or if uh, Simon Schneller and uh, Urs Huber want to get like uh, a podium's position. I think that's now also the time in a way to, to make the move. But because because if, if it gets closer to the finish, I almost doubt that they would be in the situation to sprint for a podium uh, uh, position. Yeah, we saw yesterday uh, how World Bicycle Relief got a lead down the single track, uh, the, the drop off uh, cliffhanger, and then Matt Beers. Well, he's so confident that he afterwards he said, well, I knew I could catch them when we got onto the flats. And he did just that and uh, pull, pulled uh, Howard Grotz into the mix there. So there's a problem here for the Bulls Mavericks because Urs Huber has dropped away off this uh, bunch. And Simon Schneller, who'd led them down there, has inadvertently perhaps uh, put a little too much pressure on his partner. And uh, he's disconnected from the group here. Uh, Schneller will have to ease up. There is uh, the image of uh, Urs Huber suffering. So he's, he's still in the climb, so he there's still quite a bit, uh, I don't know if it's like a, a bit um, a replay, it almost seems like, so that, uh, or he had, no. That's him. It's That's it, the yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's just a, but, but um, um, they should be actually already on the other side. Well, uh, Thomas Dietsch, a uh, former teammate of Urs Huber, is with us here. No, Thomas, uh, Urs looks as though he's, uh, he's suffering a bit there, trying to get back to the group. Quite here, if, uh, I'm not sure if he can pick us up, but uh, I think he's focusing here on uh, seeing how Urs Huber can uh, bring this back as he drops down <laughs> with some relief onto uh, a little bit of uh, flatter terrain. Urs Huber will use this section to try and get back in touch, and hopefully his partner Simon Schneller will have noticed that uh, Urs Huber is a little bit uh, been, has been distanced a bit, and uh, we saw Simon Schneller at the very front of the field. If he's gone into this trail at the very, uh, in front of Nino Schurter, then he'll have an opportunity to just to uh, back off the pace a little bit and let his partner catch up and still keep their hopes alive for a stage when all they've got to go after this climb is the Toyota tough section, golden mile, and then a tiny sting in the tail. 
on Bosman. Thomas, are you with us? Uh, it looks as though Urs really is struggling here. Yeah, it's Urs in struggle. Uh, actually, it's four teams in front of the race. Uh, Simon, Simon is, uh, is leading, but Urs is struggling a bit behind, like 10 seconds behind it. Tell us about the uh, pace and the conditions out there. Oh, it's like every day on this Cape Epic, it's really dusty um, and, and tough. Really hot condition, it's getting hot and hot. And um, yeah, riders are pushing from the beginning today again. And uh, it makes uh, the race uh, really hot. I think many riders try to survive and try to follow the leading group. And then they, they drop and uh, they, they take the, the own speed. Yeah, we'll try to come back. He's not far away. He's like, yeah, 10 seconds, still 10 seconds. He can make it. But the speed is really we high. See that they are really pushing. And Simon Schnell has just pulled out of that lead group there. So he's uh, going to wait for Ursula and try and uh, pull him back to that group. You can just see Simon Schneller dropping off the back of that lead group, letting it go. And, uh, well, Bulls Mavericks now, their hopes of a bit of glory today on stage number five. Look as though they may be dashed, although there is a little downhill to come and they uh, have an opportunity to perhaps close that gap again. But it'll take a huge effort from uh, Urs Huber, who's clearly just a little bit off the pace of his uh, young teammate uh, Simon Schneller at this stage. Well, it looks like it's around about 15 seconds that he has to make up. Do we just to the quick uh, informal time check as the last rider went into that uh, narrow section and that was the back of the, the field and 15 seconds back to Ursula. But he's got his work cut out for him. He does have Simon Schneller to help him if there are any sections where he can give him a bit of a push or uh, pull him into back into the contention, back into this lead group and uh, hopefully get a chance at some podium time at the end of the day and uh, welcome Certainly some welcome podium time and a bit of maybe hopefully a bit of a deja vu for uh, for Urs Huber and Simon Schneller. Urs Huber, a former winner of the race, uh, winning with Carl Platt. But also now yet here it looks like that Sebastian Fini also um, had a bit problems to to stay with the group. And uh, if I see right, I think that that should be actually Nino who is now actually leading uh, uh, the group. And yeah, so he's he's not he's not holding back. He's really still trying to push hard, um, and uh, not not giving up and uh, putting pressure on on uh, the other riders and other teams. Well, this uh, group, there every team, all four teams have a different agenda. Toyota Specialized 91, their job is to defend and to mark every move that Nino Schurter makes. Nino Schurter will want to put pressure on Toyota 91 Specialized or Toyota, Toyota Specialized 91 and uh, see if there are any chinks in the armor and canyon cd are happy to sit on and look for another stage win for them after having won stage three but also they've got a lot to gain because they have the ability to leapfrog the likes of uh, albeit leard speed company and possibly even challenge that third spot overall of buff megamo so everyone has different agendas and we also we know full well now that Bulls Mavericks agenda is to win the stage. They aren't in contention overall, certainly not for the podium. And they have one job and one job only, and that's to get on the podium for today's stage. But in actual fact, uh, here it's Matt Beers who is uh, leading the group. And he was now also just uh, checking out if um, um, Howard, Gr um, uh, Howard Grutz is with him. Um, and if uh, the pace is uh, not too much for him. So it's, it's definitely like also quite a challenge to still have your partner on you and with you. And, uh, but now we are here back with the leading woman. This is yeah, the uh, women's race where the uh, competition is just about as close with Ghost Factory Racing. Two minutes and 31 seconds clear of the Cannondale team at the start 
of this stage. But uh, Ghosts have been, uh, that doesn't really tell the full story. They've won every stage so far in the race, the prologue plus the four uh, stages since then. And uh, Canada Factory Racing, Mona Mittervalder and uh, Candice Lill have done very well just to keep that gap down to 2 minutes and 31. They're very much in this game. Toyota Specialized 91, 7.56 down in third place and then it's an hour and three minutes back uh, to e4 to private clients holdings in the fourth place who just a couple of minutes ahead of efficient infinity ensure vera Losa and alexis scada but uh, it uh, looks like it's coming down again to the uh, ghost factory racing pair and uh, the uh, Canada team and perhaps the uh, Toyota Specialized 91 team uh, in that uh, lead group, as it has been for the uh, three days here, but still very, very competitive and very tight here, Sabine. Yeah, and uh, I spoke to to Vera and uh, she had a bad day yesterday and it was like, really, she she uh, she suffered. Uh, it was for her a very tough, d uh, tough stage. And then also on the second downhill, she had the fall, she had uh, crashed on her, on her hip. Um, not serious, but of course, if uh, I mean it, it hurts, and you know, to get to get back into into the rhythm, um, and yeah, we're gonna try again today. So, it, um, but uh, so here we definitely have uh, our uh, usual competi uh, competitors, uh, which are in the lead. Yeah, the top three teams: Ghost Factory Racing, Canada Factory Racing, and Toyota Specialized 91, all together. And uh, a minute back at the 33 kilometer mark, we've still got to take their time at the 51k mark, but at the 33k mark, there was a, a gap of uh, one minute and eight seconds back to Vera Loza and Alexa Skada, and riding with them, Lena Giraud and Haley Preen. Who've been rock solid and taken their opportunities through this uh, week here. Fifth place for much of the, uh, well, they were fifth place, I think, on the uh, prologue, and they held that until yesterday they moved up a place uh, with the uh, uh, travails and troubles of uh, Vera Lossa. That's what this event does. She's the defending champion, the Namibian, the national champion from that country as well. But uh, it does not uh, spare anyone here, regardless of uh, your uh, pedigree in this event. Uh, you show a chink of weakness or just a little bit of illness or something goes wrong and the Absa Cape Epic will exact a heavy toll on you. We've seen a couple of the men uh, already today uh, uh, out of the race. Alex Miller, the uh, Namibian men's champion, has withdrawn just after the start due to uh, the fatigue and uh, excessive toll it's taken on his body. And uh, yesterday we saw uh, Yaroslav Kulhavi out of the race as well, the former champion. Uh, dropping out of the race uh, after a fall. Well, he posted a picture of the X-ray. Um, the first picture in the in his post was him crossing the line with his looked like his he was a little bit lopsided on the bike, um, favouring one of his shoulders. And then the next picture was an X-ray of uh, a completely broken collarbone. So he's had a hard day at the Absa Cape. But he did vow to come back and was delighted to be back at the race. And uh, at some point he was uh, he was riding well within the top ten. So. Looking forward to seeing uh, Yaroslav Kulharvi in 2025. Tell us where they're going here, Sabine. Yeah, so we're just very close to coming back to Dolhof, the last to, to the water point. And um, so we have now just seen the top two teams. And I think there was like a, um, a little bit of gap to the third team. Um, but we definitely get more information also with uh, a time split uh, very soon. At that Dulof water point, that's Jesse Nixon, who's on the Bulls Media e-bike, following uh, the leading women's teams. And uh, she's, uh, I promise you, going forward. Don't worry about that icon going back and forward. And uh, we drop, uh, we go forward now to the men's team. Sebastian Finney and Nino Schurter. They look as though they may be off the back of this group because our media, Bulls Media e-bike is normally at behind the last riders in the group. And it's been single track since then, so it's likely that they may be feeling a little bit of the pressure that we saw in our last image of the men's race with Toyota Specialized on the front. Matt Beers dictating the pace. Perhaps they are. We'll wait and see uh, how far uh, the gap is. Well, now the, the job that Nino Schurter has to do, instead of being at the front, now he has to nurse his partner back to the front and try and minimize the damage, minimize the time loss to the uh, team of Toyota Specialized 91. They, at this point, will likely to go from defense mode into attack mode and try and, keep, try and extend that gap back to Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney 
Their roles have switched. Matthew Beers and Howard Grotz now need to make hay while the sun shines and try and put more time into World Bicycle Relief. Two minutes is a very small, it's a very slim margin uh, to be going into the last, to, to a very big weekend in Stellenbosch. Yeah, you feel that uh, an opportunity to eke out uh, seconds and uh, at best minutes out of your closest rivals today is uh, a huge one because those next two stages, the last two stages uh, in the Stellenbosch Trail Network are going to uh, be extremely tough. Not that today isn't, but uh, perhaps not quite as tough as those. So uh, this is the challenge for the uh, teams today to minimize losses. Sebastian Finney, the Danish champion. We saw him quite a bit earlier, sitting up and stretching in the single track. Uh, this is the toll that, again, I'm talking about the toll that eight days of riding takes on you. Finney, in his first journey around this uh, Absa Cape Epic, is in the deep end now. He's in uncharted uh, territory. Yeah, and I guess also, I mean, it's like eight tough days of, of riding. And uh, I mean, if you see also, I mean, every time getting out of the saddle and pushing again hard, so it takes its toll, and um, but I also you know, here we see now from the from the helicopter um, a, a picture, and it looks like that still uh, Matt Beers and Harold Grotz, uh, uh, Howard Grotz are in the lead, and uh, Andreas Seewald and uh, Mark Stutzmann f uh, following the two. So it might be that uh, really um, Nino Schurter and um, uh, Sebastian Fini drop back, and it's uh, likely that. Uh the Canyon CD team, uh, team will also just uh, perhaps play a bit of a tactical game here. They know that the agenda, the chief agenda of uh, Beers and Grotz is to put time into World Bicycle Relief. Now that they have a gap, they'll want to push the pace as hard as they possibly can with Matt Beers and Howard Grotz. Uh, with only a two minute advantage and profiting from this will be Canyon CD. They can afford just to sit back and let the, uh, let the main agenda play out and uh, just take, I wouldn't say a free ride because there's still a lot of work to be done before they get to the golden mile section and the roll into the finish. But they do, they will profit from this hugely if they can get a ride on the back of the powerful South African, the defending champion. And uh, but the one thing that they will need to do is stay in touch, which is no mean feat. We can see already the gaps are developing and the pace set by Matt Beers has put everyone under pressure. Yeah, Beers has been hugely impressive, hasn't he? He's uh, taken the, the fight on and he's decided he's going to use this last few ramps to put, uh, try and put uh, World Bicycle Relief under some pressure. And it seemingly is working. Uh, sure to though, we'll know uh, how to manage these sort of situations. It's not an unfamiliar situation for the uh, multiple world champion, the 10-time world champion and uh, two-time Absa Cape Epic winner. So he knows how to handle this situation. Down they drop here. Look at uh, Beers go. Amazing through the uh, blue gum trees here at such speed. Well, the racing certainly heating up now. And uh, it is time for... Uh, we need to see to get a time check on uh, where Nina Schurter and Sebastian Finney are. Beers, Grotz, Sivolt and Stutzman. The Canyon City pair will be delighted in the way it's panning out for them. They are latched on to this uh, lead group, managed to hang on when it got uh, the, the uh, temperature rose and uh, they put time and uh, distance to their closest drivers or beer and uh, Megamo as well. Buff Megamo also off the uh, group here. Here we go. This is the gap. Uh, 20 seconds. 20 seconds, is it? Even a bit more, yeah, so it's... Uh... And at this junction, the race with only two minutes on general classification between the yellow jerseys and this pair, that is an absolute gift for the beers grotz combination. On board here at high speed. On the gold mile, absolutely spectacular. They are on the limit. Just look how much they're leaning. Andreas uh, Sievold and Mark Stutzman at the back there. The Swiss champion is leaning all the way through these berms. These are hand cut trails. And uh, they do say, we have, did hear that it is possible to trust the builder is the, is the phrase of the day. Trust that these berms will take you through into the next section. And that's what these top riders are doing. Almost horizontal as they head through this uh, track. Yeah, and, and always if you have like an onboard camera, camera, it almost makes you leaning into these berms and like just going with the same, with the same, yeah, like movement like the riders doing, and it's. Uh, 
Yeah, it, I did. I did this also um, when I was on the free roller. Uh, was watching. Was watching alpine skiing and uh, went off the roller. <laughs> can, can easily happen. You mean you lent into <laughs> you lent into a berm on yeah. an alpine ski, but you're on your rollers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well, that unbelievable scenes of them flying down there at high speed. Thankfully, uh, Mark Stutzman and uh, Andrea Sivold stayed upright and uh, no doubt everyone will. But it, th that trail is, is sandy and, and sketchy and it'll get looser and looser as the day goes on. But it is a thrilling one. Yeah, luckily you have like this, the, the, the berms are quite high, which, uh, and, and, and this is also, the higher you ride, uh, the better actually, because the loose sand just slides Drops down, down into, the bottom, in, yeah. into the bottom. Yeah. Beers, look, look at him go, Beers. Wow. Phenomenal power set down by Matt Beers, and uh, all the uh, Canyon CD have to do is just stay on the back of Hard Grotz. The riders are the, the two person team race. The teams are obliged by the rules of the race to stay together, not allowed to be separated by more than two minutes. Matt Beers had to wait for his partner, Howard Grotz, which lets Canyon CD. All they have to do is mark Howard Grotz. And uh, I'm sure for Matt Beers, all he wants to do is put down the, all of his watts onto the uh, trails right now, onto these roads, into the finish, into Wellington, because he knows he has an advantage over Nino Schurter. And that is a rare thing indeed to have a gap and he'll want to extend that two minute gap to even more. Which can actually get eaten uh, in the next days quite quickly. So uh, the more you can gain mm. today, the better. So that you just have like this mm. little bit extra puffer to uh, to also, yeah, to have As some more, t the, the more time you can actually yeah, exactly. gain the better. Yeah. And Nino was talking yesterday about how he's looking forward to the Stellenbosch trails. He's got a, a, a property in, the, in Stellenbosch. He knows this area like the back of his hand. So do most of these riders, but uh, it's his type of terrain, and uh, so every opportunity that uh, Beers and Grotz uh, can to take time out of uh, the World Bicycle Relief Pair, they will do so, and they're doing it right now as they snake down through these uh, bush vines here. The Bossman family vines heading uh, towards those here. It, uh, the Bossman family vines really are a uh, beautiful part of the uh, Wellington uh, wineries and uh, in fact are the Platters uh, Editor's Winery of the Year in 2024. Uh, that land dating back uh, to 1810, uh, eight generations of the Bosmans uh, creating world-class wines. But this is world-class racing as uh, Beers and uh, Grotz try and put this one to bed. They've yet to win a stage at this year's race. The team behind them have won a stage. That's uh, the pair of Seerwald and Stutzman. But it's the yellow jerseys who are leading them out at the moment. Well, Canyon CD have had a resurgent week. They won stage three, and on stage four, they were third. Uh, just a minute ten back off the uh, winning time of Nino Schota and Sebastian Finney. And all they need to do is stay on the back. But the uh, under pressure is World Bicycle Relief. Sebastian Finney is led by none other than Nino Schota, his teammate as they try and minimize the damage done by Howard Grotz and Matt Beers. Toyota Specialized 91 are in yellow and World Bicycle Relief within two minutes of them on overall general classification going into today's stage. And they need to try and keep that gap to an absolute minimum going into the next two days. And it's all about, uh, it's all about uh, whenever you can take the advantage and whenever you have the chance is take it. It's about making hay while the sun shines. And two minutes is a tiny gap going into such a big two, sta big two stages coming up in Stellenbosch. Yeah. You see Nino's head bobbing uh, the way he does in that uh, very characteristic style. You know he's on the game here. He's really chasing to try and bring this group back. That little drag, we've seen it over the f last couple of days up towards uh, the uh, finish as they uh, dig deep here. Beers has been an absolute uh, monster today, setting a relentless pace, particularly over the back end of the stage. The leaders on the right, left-hand side, and uh, the chasers, uh, Nino Schurter and uh, Sebastian Finney on the uh, right-hand side, will try and maybe get uh, a gap for you, but 20, 23, 24 seconds, maybe the, uh, the gap between these two. I guess by, by now it might be also even more, because we got a, um, a split time for Matt Beers, uh, for the Toyota Specialized 91, and for the Kenyan CD team, but um, there is no um, uh, 
World Bicycle Relief Team uh, listed yet, so we, we still uh, need to come to that uh, split time. So it's uh, increasing all the while as uh, Stutzman out of the saddle there, drinking, drinking is the important thing as they get to the uh, finish here. The temperature's rising, perhaps not quite as hot as yesterday. And uh, Sabine? And uh, yeah, so now we, we came to through that point and it's uh, 30 seconds uh, is the gap to the leading two teams. Critical time leaking away for World Bicycle Relief here. Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney as they try and minimize and close that gap on the closing stages on uh, stage five of the Absa Cape Epic, capitalizing are Canyon City, who are in the middle in this in this fight. They're not about the general classification, and the, the uh, well, they are, but not about the yellow jerseys. The yellow jerseys on the backs of uh, Matt Beers and uh, Howard Grotz. Well, that's the agenda of the day, certainly for Matt Beers and Howard Grotz. They are probably not too concerned about the stage. They are way more concerned about the very real threat of Nina Schott and Sebastian Finney to their overall lead. And profiting from that, Andreas Sievold. If you were Andreas Sievold and Mark Stutzman, Sabine, what would you do right now? Yeah, we would probably also try and still to go, to go for um, a stage win. And uh, now on the final meters, uh, you, you need to position yourself right to get that, that chance to, yeah, to, to pass. Um, and I think it might, might be Howard Grotz who would be now the weakest then if it comes to the sprint. Meanwhile, we were the third team on this stage right now. Sebastian Finney, the Danish champion, uh, on the wheel of his uh, illustrious partner in uh, Nino Schurter. Finney perhaps has had uh, a really tough day today. And uh, Schurter trying to drag his partner on towards uh, this pair uh, of uh, teams up ahead. Canyon City and uh, Toyota specialized 91 in uh, Matt Beers and Howard Grotz, who have opened up just a second or two on uh, the uh, German Swiss pair of uh, Stutzmann and uh, Sivolt. And it's Sivolt who now is uh, taking a bit of strain. Yeah, so he was very strong at the beginning of the Cape Epic, at the Epic Cape Epic, 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 uh, epic uh, stages and uh, had uh, the last two days a bit some problems and uh, Mark Stutzman actually got stronger. They've gone right through the Bossman family vines uh, here. Fantastic to have them here. They do host races there. They've got uh, some incredible wines. But this is the vintage ride today. It is Matt Beers and Howard Grotz who are nailing uh, the uh, yellow jersey firmly onto their shoulders today with a uh, magnificent ride. Here comes uh, Schurter and uh, his partner Finney. Seervolt and Stutzman seem to be dropping off the pace here across that narrow bridge. There's the gap under the uh, marker, under the flam rouge as, uh, as uh, Sabine uh, christened this uh, little bridge. They've been on it now three times in the last three days, which will give them a sign that they are very close to home. And vintage uh, performance by Matt Beers. And if you can think that uh, they've, how many obstacles they've had to climb, they've uh, been through some tricky sections. And on the flats, this is absolutely Matt Beers' natural habitat. And as is evidenced by the fact that they have distanced Andreas Seewald, even though they were in the draft, they were on the wheel, they've been distanced by Matt Beers and Howard Grotz. Howard Grotz, an admirable performance by the, uh, by the American tucked in behind Matt Beers. It's, it's, they call it the sports physiologist will call will refer to a value called FTP and uh, Matt Beers's FTP power is among what is most likely one of the very best in the business. Matt Beers powering ahead Howard Grotz and stage looks very much within their grasp and extending their lead on overall. This would be let's not speak too soon. It would be their first stage win of the Absa Cape Epic. Still one objective st uh, to, uh, to, over to achieve. And it looks like they're on their way to get their first stage win and to cement their place on overall. Yeah, the gap to um, the Kenyan CD team definitely gets bigger. And that makes them actually like, yeah, gives them a comfortable um, 
yeah, a pro uh, um, um, arrival and they can also celebrate because we didn't really had like so much celebration for of the winning teams crossing the finish line because it was always sprinting, really a sprinting, sprinting and yes. a, a hard fight. Well, here they go. They looked over their shoulders at that last corner just to see if they could see, uh, catch a glimpse of the Canyon City pair. They were out of the sight, which will be a good sign for Matt Beers and Howard Grotz as they take this last turn onto this little single track. They will know that they are on the brink of uh, securing a stage win here. Canyon City, perhaps uh, 10 seconds behind them. They will surge along the uh, banks of this dam here. Beers started out his sporting life as a motocross racer. Whilst he was in the States, he picked up an injury, went and did some uh, cycling tests, and they realized he does have an extraordinary FTP, and he's putting it to great use today in the company of the man from Colorado, a uh, partner who has won this race before in Howard Grotz. Grotz is doing all he can to hang on to the motor of... Uh, the uh, brilliant and powerful Matt Beers. A phenomenal performance by the South African, the defending champion, and we counted at the corner eight seconds back. They were eight seconds back, so still they really, they're at the finish now. They are coming into the finish here in Wellington. It is Beers and Grotz in the yellow jerseys. Beers has won stages with Jordan Saru. He's won stages with Chris, Chris Blevins, but here he comes to victory here on a stage five with Howard Grotz. Beers for the 10th time with the stage. Grotz the second time and the yellow jerseys have nailed down the stage today in emphatic fashion. Canyon City capitalizing on the opportunities have uh, sat on the tail and eventually crossing the line in second place. They will improve their hopes of uh, finishing on the podium at the end of this race with another fantastic uh, performance today. They won a stage, now they've finished second and uh, the clock is ticking back to World Bicycle Relief. Nino Schurter and his partner Sebastian Finney who uh, were two minutes behind the yellow jerseys going into today's stage. They're into the tented village now. The clock still ticks. Uh, they were 30 seconds back uh, about two kilometers from home. They will hope to keep uh, that under 30 seconds and uh, really have uh, something to work with going into the last two stages. Schurter and Finney in third place on stage five of the Absa Cape Epic. They are across the line now. And uh, the uh, gap back to uh, Canyon uh, to the uh, leaders is very tight. It's quite an impressive. Um... On the flat? Yeah, yeah. I mean, to the guy like Matt, it makes sense. We, we pushed hard on the climb, and then I was a little loose on the descent, but. Uh, Pushing it, it's racing. Right. Your first stage win, this Absa Cape Epic, how does that feel in the leaders' jersey yeah. doing it? Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. You don't want to just be on the defensive all the time. And so, yeah, it, it was a fun one. You take your opportunity when you gain time. Yeah, exactly. We we have to. Two minutes is still very tight um, with, you know, with these two big stages left. And yeah, you kind of have to conserve energy, but you also need to, if you feel good and you can get some time, then... Yeah, that's what you did. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. And uh, enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect day pretty much for you guys today. Yeah. Well, that was uh, Matt Pierce and Howard Grotz just after they got off the bike. The microphone's in their faces. Lovely to get their immediate reactions. As Simon Schneller and Urs Huber of the Bulls Mavericks uh, come home, uh, putting the uh, finishing touches to their best day so far on the, the uh, Epic in 2024. Uh, they tried to stay with the group and eventually on the last climb it was uh, Urs Huber who lost uh, contact, but uh, they managed their their loss as well, yeah. fourth place. That battle was just too fierce for them for the battle for GC. It was too fierce. There was another agenda. And uh, Urs Huber, a new a last-minute call-up to the race, has done very well to take fourth slot on today's stage. Just having a look back at Buff Megamo, we saw that uh, Canyon CD have already, on virtual general classification, have already slipped into fourth spot ahead of Orbi Elliott Speed Company and now are breathing down the necks on the overall GC, down, breathing down the necks of Buff Megamo. And that is Buff Megamo there, Hans uh, Becking, 
and uh, Wout Allemann back in their jerseys. The Dutch uh, champions jersey on the front, the uh, European uh, marathon champions jersey uh, behind them. And Singer racing as uh, the uh, Fabian Ravensteiner and uh, Samueli Poro have uh, come back into it a little bit today. The uh, William Victoria team into the uh, finish. Here comes uh, Allemann followed by the Singer racing pair and uh, Becking, who's going to win this sprint? And it may well have been the uh, Alaman uh, Buff Megamo pair. So uh, they trying to minimize their losses. Uh, have they done enough to uh, stay uh, ahead of Canyon City uh, on uh, general classification? I think they might just have done that. They have done that. They still, Buff Megamo still have a three minute advantage, over, just over three minute advantage over Canyon City. But the resurgent team. A disappointing first couple of days versus some fantastic first couple of days at the Absa Cape Buff Megamo. Big difference between the two, but Canyon City are definitely on the upswing. Momentum is in their favor. They gained several minutes today, and uh, Canyon City look, uh, look extremely good for that podium spot. Buff Megamo, they'll look for better days. Two more big days to come in Stellenbosch. The big battle. There's a battle for first place and a battle for third place. Back with the uh, women's race here, and they have just left uh, Valvan Pass and they're heading up now. The uh, hard work uh, still remains for them to climb uh, out of the valley and uh, make their way uh, towards the Golden Mile in the finish. It does happen quickly, though, as we saw with the men uh, once they've done this uh, climb. And uh, the Ghost Factory Racing Team are there, and it looks like so are the uh, Cannondale Factory Racing Team. Get a little bit closer there. They may be uh, mixing. Uh, the back end of uh, some of the uh, men from the UCI group. Let's go uh, to the finish and uh, Bart who's got the Canyon men with him. Congratulations, second place. Uh, how was it at the end? It ran so fast. Uh, yeah, in the end, the very last climb, uh, Matt Beers, I think, made the pace super high. And uh, we, could, we could follow him. Unfortunately, not really able to hear what uh, is being said there by Andreas Servold, but he did talk about the searing heat and searing pace being said on there. Here yeah, right, we are, talk about pace. The uh, Ghost Factory Racing and Cannondale Factory Racing teams back together again at the front end of the Aramex women's race. And uh, so they are the uh, premium uh, teams in this race and they're dominating again. Two teams in the lead group at the very head of the field. Ghost Factory Racing, Cannondale Factory Racing, and 1 minute 37 back for Toyota Specialized 91. The three contending teams we've seen during this week that have risen to the top. And at 51 kilometers, Toyota Specialized 91 have lost over uh, over one and a half minutes. And Sofia Gomez Villafana and Samara Shepard are losing more time to them, to the uh, top two rivals today. Ghost Factory Racing have looked so composed and controlled, they've dominated the race, despite the fact that the lead's only two and a half minutes. Uh, can, can, Cannondale Factory Racing, what can they do uh, today, tomorrow, the final day? So we're still going to try to make the move and uh, if also for the next days put pressure on, um, on the Ghost Factory Racing team. But at the moment it's, it's uh, that it's a actually the other way around that the ghost factory racing team is often actually in the lead and they're sitting in a quite comfortable situation they if they can control and um, i mean ken has really tried also to, to put pressure on mona it's it's her first year um, racing the epic and she's in general she's a, a very young rider so she also still needs in a way to um to yeah she's she's still experience and she needs to need to go in, in into this and she is very ambitious but she also needs to learn to also accept certain things and uh, she still questions a lot of it. <laughs> so i mean it's like 
bit an inside view also when I spoke yesterday a bit to Candice and she has like this experience she has done over uh, like I think this is now her sixth uh, uh, Cape Epic and you have also things you can control you try to get control over it and other things you can't control you need to let you have to accept and let go of it and uh, these are these are all part of the lessons being learned by young Mona Mittenwald. I remember she's just 22. Uh, yes, her record suggests that she has been riding a lot longer than that with two uh, marathon world championships and two World Cup wins already. But uh, she is only 22 and her first Absa Cape Epic journey is another big step in the development of uh, this world-class rider. Well, that uh, is going to be a big career by the looks of it, Mona Mittenwald. And uh, they are very soon they'll be hitting the 10k to go mark. They're about to reach 60 kilometer mark and they'll be reaching that uh, USN Hydra point on the climb up to the high point. It's not the high point in the race, but it's the last climb, the last summit of the race at uh, the beginning of Toyota Tough section, the Golden Mile. So two teams in the mix and we see more of a defensive position at the moment, perhaps just trying to hang on to the pace set by um, Ghost. It's not easy to see what is going on in terms of the efforts that are going on on the trails right now but uh, clear that uh, the race is going to come down to these two teams well the uh, race is on uh, for the uh, win this is the race the abs african uh, jersey with uh, philip base he's the second rider there and in front of him peter de toy who's uh, joined the Pige eurosteel team this year having been uh, riding with Mbuko up until now. They are in the Africa lead by 9 minutes and 36 over Mbuko. Uh, and uh, they look as though they're consolidating that lead today, the Mbuko pair, Marco Hubert and Vessel Buerta. Third place up for grabs because uh, Toyota specialized or out of the race as a team because of the withdrawal of Alex Miller, which means that Valley Electoral Titan Racing, Rousseau Becker and Matthijs Bjerkes will have moved onto the podium position uh, in the Abs African jersey. That was uh, at the start of today's stage. We don't, uh, we'll uh, see how it all unfolds once they get to the finish. But uh, Base is a perennial wearer of this jersey over the many, many years he's been riding the Abs Cape Epic. Uh, he's ridden with uh, many different uh, South African uh, partners, uh, but his uh, early experience was alongside Nino Schurter. Uh, who better to ride alongside with than uh, Nino Schurter when Schurter was still exploring uh, the Absa Cape Epic as, an op uh, as a, a pre-season preparation uh, event and uh, then, got then got the bug and decided he wanted to win it, which he duly did. Yeah, and he, uh, I mean, he also uh, joined or like took uh, um, part in the Cape Epic now for many, many times uh, with uh, various uh, um, partners. And he won too, and uh, I guess it's also just he loves this race, and he sees also the yeah, or the benefit of in the preparation for the World Cup season. Absolutely. In the early years, the uh, event carried uh, UCI ranking points for cross-country races, and it attracted uh, a huge number of uh, the top cross-country races. Now those points are marathon series uh, points, and uh, so they. Uh, fewer of the cross-country riders uh, come out and uh, chase those points, but it's still, still lovely to have uh, the uh, core of some of the very best of them with us as they snake in towards the uh, finish here in Wellington, the CPUT uh, grounds, the race village for the last couple of days uh, here, a town that uh, dates back to the late 1600s of Wellington. And uh, Philip Bass and... Uh, his partner Peter de Toy just rolling in here in the Absa African jerseys and they will consolidate I think their hold on that by finishing in uh, a fairly solid position today Valley Electoral Titan racing some way off them or well, in overall general class classification certainly Valley Electrical Titan racing off the pace but uh, Philip Bass, Peter de Toy finished behind uh, Birkus and Becker on the day on the stage by around about 30 seconds so still Great defense of that uh, jersey by Philip Bass and Peter de Toy. Philip Bass having won four stages already at the Absa Cape Epic in the Elite and uh, doing that uh, Absa Africa jersey proud. It's run out of space on the wall in his house for Absa Africa jerseys, but uh, still another one would, uh, wouldn't harm anyone. 
has over the years always talked about trying to get into the top five of the general classification and onto the podium, but uh, the next best thing is those Absa jerseys. Now, the uh, Chivita Orange uh, leaders jerseys belong to the Aramex women's category, and in particular, they've uh, been the sole possession of Anne Terpstra and Nicole Kohler throughout this race in their debut in the Absa Cape Epic. It's uh, not an unfamiliar situation. In fact, uh, three of those four riders in that uh, group are novices, so to speak, or newbies, as they use uh, the term here on their on the race numbers. They've just passed through the 60-kilometer mark. We're tracking them as they're about to reach the, the USN Hydra Point, and, uh, which is around about halfway up the climb up to the Toyota Tough, the t Toyota Tough section, the beginning of the Toyota Tough section, Golden Mile. So this is the climb where it really could get quite selective now. Mona Mittevalna and Candice will need to be attentive and need to steal the resolve for this. And uh, no doubt we'll see a final surge from Team Ghost. They've been at the front. They are race racing aggressively. They don't have to. They are would be quite content just to uh, sit back and ride defensively and let the team of Fact Cannondale Factory Racing make the move. But they may be also just like the likes of Matthew Beers and Howard Grotz. They're not satisfied with that two and a half minute advantage. They realize that it is a very slender advantage going into two big days in Stellenbosch and two complicated days in terms of the technical trails, the climbs, and they know they need to get as much advantage over their rivals as possible. And they know this, they're on the front and we'll see just how much time they can gain on their rivals. Candice Lil leaving a little bit of a gap. Mona Vitavala on in touch with that wheel of Anna Terpstra and setting the pace is Nicole Collar. Almost the first time we've said that uh, th this week. Uh, Candice Lil has uh, been very evidently the stronger of the two in that partnership until uh, this moment, but uh, she's back on. Yeah. It's still hard to tell from this angle. It might just be, she might just be yeah. leaving a bit of a gap, but uh, or just if you if you have like a, a little bite to eat or so yeah. then it's also just it can if she's if she's uh, comfortable then then she would also be able to quickly close this gap again okay. so we are like the, uh, the, le the last hydro point of the today's stage and oh, then we're dropping down mm. uh, exactly a look on that profile is there that hydro point is around about halfway up that climb and uh, hopefully candace Lil can get back in touch with that lead the very front of the field as the race slows down and starts to narrow, the trail starts to narrow. Use in Hydro Point coming up the final climb, yeah. and then it's the uh, Golden Mile. No problem for Candice Lil. He's uh, able to get back in touch with the leaders, and the fans of the South African rider will be watching closely to see, hopefully, or gain themselves a stage win for today. Look, I mean, it's. Uh if we would be in the situation in the to also to uh, put pressure on them, so we would have to pass the two. Um, and uh, there was like a little bit before the hydro pond, there was like a bit an open section where you could ride double double lanes and, and you could overtake uh, the two. But Mona was just sitting behind them, riding the same pace, which also shows me that she's not in the situation or. A, a, a take it now together that that her and uh, uh, Candice Lil are not in the position to really ride harder than the ghost racing team. Certainly if Mona Mitterlander were to detect that her partner Candice Lil was in a bit of trouble having difficulty closing those gaps, best thing that Mona Mitterlander could do would be to get in between the two riders of the ghost, the ghost factory racing team. That will be a tactical move and these narrow trails, but it looks like these riders are all pretty much in touch. But there's my, what you see is like uh, that Nickel Collar and also Anna Terpstra, they, there's always like a, a quick look a bit over mm -hmm. the shoulder, they, they're checking out uh, what are the others doing. So um, it might be that they also just with they trying to increase the pace and checking if the one of the, the following riders, if Mona or if Lil, uh, if Candice Lil, if we uh, battle with the with the speed, um, yeah. So th there is always like a bit this this uh, check out uh, with the with the look over the shoulder. Yes, they just uh, slowly just opening uh, the uh, pace a little and uh, putting them under just a little bit more pressures uh, to have a look back and see what effect they've had and. 
And perhaps noticed that uh, Candice Hill was off on that uh, when we noticed a little bit a while ago. And uh, so it just opened up a little. Nicole Cole on the front here and, uh, and turf strip on her wheel as they have been all the way. Yes, uh, Re recognizable with their, those, um, those all carbon fiber wheels. It's a distinctive scene that we've seen on the uh, World Cup scene and, and the first time at the Absic Epic. We haven't seen those wheels at the front of the field and they are riding, it's a Ghost Factory Racing Team, Ghost Bikes, and uh, we saw earlier that uh, they are also running that uh, new flight attendant system, the uh, electronic suspension system where all of the components, all of the major components are linked up to operate the suspension, to open and close the suspension uh, automatically using AI, using machine learning and deep learning to understand the rider's characteristics and also switch off most <laughs> it's really going to come into its own when we get to the sprint because that's when maximum power will go down and that's when the suspension will lock out so that there is absolutely no power loss at all mona metavolna absolutely in touch staying glued to the rear wheel of anna terpstra it'll be a familiar sight for her being glued to the wheel of anna terpstra she's they both race on the world cup scene and both having won uci world cups the ominous gap there forming back to Candace Lil. She needs to get back in touch. There is a little bit of a way to go on the Toyota before they get to the Toyota tough section. But uh, Candace Lil will rely on these corners to drift into the corners as fast as possible and to close that gap. Terpstra and uh, Kola will be aware. They're just. Uh, just, yeah, so just push it a little bit harder. Especially like if you have like these uh, the, the the corners where you have like uh, almost like a, a one 180 degrees, then then you can see what's happening with the right spec. Well, the uh, men's podium happening down at the finish here in Wellington as uh, Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney step up onto the uh, third step on the podium. Well, Stutzman and uh, Sirvold have had. Uh, a good week stage win they've been on the podium twice more aside from the top step and now the first time this week an opportunity for matt beers and howard gotts to go to the very top of the podium their first stage win of the week the yellow jerseys their first day in yellow and uh, they have uh, done uh, a fantastic job to consolidate that hold on the yellow jersey and coming good in the latter half of the race, the uh, defending champion and the 2021 champion, Matt Beers, is well and truly a stage race specialist. He does race the gravel scene in the US during the year. And uh, uh, kind of a double, um, double talent, you could say. And certainly is uh, showing that he is one of the very finest stage racers on the planet and uh, looking to write his name into the history books. And, looking for his third win, matching the likes of Yaroslav Kulhavi. Up uh, the uh, last few uh, ramps of this climb, and uh, Candice Hill's done well to latch back onto the wheel of her partner, Mona Mittenwala here. No question about Ghost Factory Racing. They have looked supreme all week, completely in control. They've yet Touch wood for their perspective uh, had to have a, a serious mechanical or an issue. They've just uh, stayed locked to each other's wheels and kept a steady tempo all the way through. Confirmation of uh, their hold on the yellow jersey. They wear it into stage five in Stellenbosch. Matt Beers and Howard Grotz of Toyota Specialized 91. They lead the uh, APSA Cape Epic uh, after Stage five and six days of racing, two to go. It's the critical phase of the race. It's when you want to perhaps take the jersey and uh, really relish the opportunity to defend it over the next couple of days in Stellenbosch. The race, in fact, won't ride, the, the riders won't ride from Wellington to, to uh, Stellenbosch. They'll be transported by their own means or by uh, bus, courtesy of the Absa Cape Epic organization. And uh, they will set up camp uh, at the race village in Stellenbosch, and then two days of racing around uh, the beautiful trails of Stellenbosch await these uh, riders. How are they going to uh, relish that? And it's going to be spectacular watching them uh, 
race around the, the trails. Some talk of a little bit of rain later on uh, this weekend. Well, we'll wait to, to see if that happens. Whatever it is, it's going to be fantastic racing. Now, Jesse Nixon uh, is an indication of where our leading women are. Just about getting to the top of the climb, and then it's the golden mile. And as we saw with the men, and the, these riders will know the race to the finish is flat and fast. Very close to the uh, top of that section, the Toyota Tough section, uh, the Golden Mile, and uh, the team. If there's any rider in this elite select group that is struggling, they'll be relieved to be getting to that downhill section. Ghost Factory Racing looking very much in charge, so in control, and it's just a carbon copy of them the entire week. Hardly put a foot wrong. In fact, they have not put a foot wrong. Let's be clear. They have not shown a single sign of weakness. And Candice Lil and Mona Mittervalna have, they have really got to uh, bring their A game to the finish to get to hopefully win a stage. They're looking to get a stage out of this. And uh, they know what they have to do. But they still, it's all very well thinking it and uh, t planning it, but actually executing it uh, against two of the world's finest cross country riders is no mean feat. And uh, even if uh, the, f the free riders beside um, Candice Lille are newbies in the Cape Epic, um, I mean, Nico Koller and uh, Anna Terpstra, they have definitely, m they are older, they have more riding experience all over the world, over different conditions. And it's still with that uh, Mona Mittenwalna also has to, in a way, um, gain that experience and uh, learn in a way to, to yeah, also to deal with uh, specific situations which you face here in the Cape Epic. It, the dust riding like really on the rear wheel of, of uh, other riders in the dust where you don't see anything. And she's, sh there she's very, yeah, like a bit apprehensive and like cautious. She's, she likes in a way also to, to actually ride ahead and uh, gains actually like uh, or like wins the races when she can go uh, ahead in the climb and and uh, and uh, make actually move in the uh, but if she's under pressure in a bunch that's that's for her it's a bit of downfall so she's a front runner if you like likes to get in front and then uh, build on that lead here and uh, that's uh, Mittevalna and Lil following down the trail as Ghost Factory Racing, Turfstra and Cola make this look uh, absolutely uh, supreme. They really are uh, quality riders in this sort of condition. The uh, erosion uh, canyon, uh, you, if you like, which is the Golden Mile, uh, is the perfect uh, platform for a wonderful trail, and they have exploited it to, to the maximum here. They've opened a little bit of a gap, um, but that's uh, by just the nature of the uh, downhill here. Here comes uh, Mittervalna. Yep, look at that little little gap uh, by the uh, skill of the cross-country racers here going so smoothly. Beautiful riding from uh, this pair. They'll get towards the bottom and then hook down onto the farm roads alongside the vineyards. They are in control again, goes factory racing. And clever move from them just to use their skills, get a bit of a gap because they know that uh, the Canada factory racing team will just have to put in a bit of a little bit of extra effort to close that gap on the flats and of course when it comes to an all-out effort in the sprint you need all that you have and uh, just that extra effort that Cannondale factory racing will need to spend getting back in touch may just blunt in their sprint just that little bit and yeah what we also saw the, in the uh, previous days like um, if, it if it came to the flat section it was actually Candice Lil who tried to pull Mona back to the leading group and um, Today it seems like that um, Kenneth has a little bit or is definitely a bit on the weaker side. So let's see if Mona would be able to help now Kenneth uh, to get back to the, the Ghost Factory racing team. Bit of a drag now as they try and close that gap. Mona Mitavala on the front here. Candice Lil, you can see just on the back end, as we said uh, earlier, it's not uh, often we've said that this week. She has done so much of the... Uh, pace making pace setting for her team and indeed in the in, in the race itself as they cross the uh, irrigation canal the uh, olive trees olive orchards on the uh, left hand side the vineyards on the right as they rocket down the slopes of uh, Grunberg towards the finish here in Wellington well they're just about to approach the Val de Chiron section that's the 5k to go mark and they'll be there almost momentarily as they absolutely fly along these flat sections 
And Ghost Factory Racing looking to make it uh, six out of six on stage five. They won the prologue, stages one to four, and stage five looks well within their grasp as they have already distanced Cannondale Factory Racing. The race is not done yet, but uh, it looks very clear that uh, Nicole Collar is going to be putting down as much power as she can and go riding through and off and collaborating with her partner, Anna Terpstra, to keep that gap at bay. And if nothing else, if even if the team of Cannondale Factory Racing Team get back on in touch with Ghost, at what cost, what kind of condition they're going to be like at the finish if they have to still make a sprint for it. They're making that effort, aren't they? You saw uh, Moda Medivala up the saddle end, uh, Candace tucking in behind her to maximize the, uh, the drag effect, but uh, it is uh, Kohler and uh, Terpstra. Look as though they've flown the coop now for Ghost Factory Racing, are charging ahead. They sense another opportunity for a stage win here to continue their dominance uh, throughout this race. So the only advantage the two um, uh, Candice Lil and uh, Mona Mitterwald now have now is like the, the, the final approach, it's, uh, it's ev even so slightly a bit different. So what we see is just the team ahead, the Ghost Factory team. So which, where we're turning to the left, to the right, because that's slightly different. So we can maybe also get, go with a little bit more speed around the corners and carry a bit more, more pace around, uh, 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 around the corner. Well, they are closing in on the finish here at uh, the uh, Wellington uh, CPUT grounds. And it uh, is for money looking like a Ghost Factory Racing uh, uh, win again. But uh, Mona Mitterwald and uh, Candice Lill doing all they can to try and uh, close that gap. Two minutes 31 was the gap at the start of the day on general classification between the two teams. And uh, if they can close the gap, they'll at least minimize that. There we go. Not much uh, time between them. We're into familiar territory now. Going across the irrigation canal. Aldi Chiron is the base for the wild boar trails. Hedgehog, porcupine, warthog, and the big one, wild boar. 45 kilometers of trails from uh, Val de Chiron. Five kilometers. Uh, they're closing in on the finish here. Nicole Kohler and Ann Terpstra have passed through that uh, checkpoint, and so have uh, Mitterwalna. And a little 11 seconds, the gap back to them. Beautiful scenes as uh, Ghost Factory Racing. They've never been more than uh, that distance apart throughout this race. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, uh, they just work so nicely together. And uh, Anna Terpstra and Nicole Koller, like body shape and also like from the strength, they, we can work like in these flex, flat sections very nicely together. We, we taking turns and uh, that, of course, helps if, if you have like always like a bit a move uh, through, the, through the team and uh, taking turns. Well, they uh, become very used to wearing those uh, jerseys. The, uh, Chivita orange leaders jerseys and uh, they've got some young uh, <laughs> support the uh, youngsters it's a holiday weekend here in uh, South Africa so there's plenty of support schools are on holiday and Terpstra and Kohler getting some encouragement and then riding away from the youngsters that's how powerful they are well you can see the effort that they're putting in just the body language and not only that you can see from the gap that they've been creating and gap has been growing. It's gone to over 11 seconds at the moment to Cannondale Factory Racing. It is a long gap, but of course they are riding along a very fast section of trail at the more trail and more on the road at the moment. And they are minutes away from the finish. We expect to see them in just a few minutes. And the Ghost Factory Racing team. Anna Terpstra, the uh, Dutch woman who's won World Cups before on the UCI World Cup circuit. Nicole Koller, a former world junior champion and in Switzerland. If you're a top rider in Switzerland, you're a top rider in the world. Fantastic program. The Swiss mountain biking program bringing the world some phenomenal riders. And Ghost Factory Racing look likely for another win. Gaining time over Canada Factory Racing. We still have yet to get sight of Toyota Specialized 91, Sofia Gomez, Villafana, Samara Shepard. They were 1 minute 37 back at the 51 kilometer mark, but we've already seen the riders pass. The top riders, the first riders passed through the uh, 64 kilometer mark. And in fact, as we said that Toyota Specialized 91 just passed the 5k to go mark. 
three minutes and three seconds back off the time set by Ghost Factory Racing. Still five Ks to go for the Ghost Factory Racing team to cement their six out of six record, a clean record at the 2024 event. Just there you saw uh, Candice Lill going to the front of the uh, chase for Cannondale Factory Racing, but it might be forlorn because this pair are absolutely holding nothing back. A cola and uh, Terpstra in perfect uh, symmetry here. They have uh, kept uh, no more than a couple of inches apart throughout the day and kept a relentless pace, just up the tempo of the last climb and then escaped down the uh, descent, the golden mile, and built on that on the flatter sections towards uh, the finish now. We did expect to see the move from them on the climb. They did put the pressure down, but the move actually happened on that downhill section, just getting a couple of extra bike lengths. And then when that tiny gap was there, they put down maximum power. Great tactics from the uh, from the Ghost Factory Racing team. And just a quick look at the overall general classification, Ghost Factory Racing had two and a half minute advantage over Canada Factory Racing at the start of the race. And just like we saw in the men's category, in the women's category, they're looking to scrape just a few more seconds out of Canada Factory Racing. It all is gonna come down to the wire. The last two days in Stellenbosch, it's still a very slim advantage. Canada Factory Racing will want to minimize the damage as much as possible because they know that every second counts in the Classic edition, the 20th edition of the Apsa Cape Epic is the most competitive we've seen so far at the race. Living up to its billing as the uh, most competitive mountain bike stage race uh, in the world. They pass through Bosman uh, family wines now. They know they are closing in at home. This is a slight uh, change to uh, the finish, but uh, they'll cross that little bridge. One uh, couple of kilometers uh, left there is the... Uh, the uh, bridge that they'll cross under, that is a huge sign that they know they are within a kilometre or so of the finish here. And Terpstra and Nicole Kohler. Spectators stopping to get a look at our RMX uh, women as they cross underneath there. No problem at all. Super smooth, super fast and so controlled. Real thought uh, since we've sort of got the Cena Fry, uh, Laura Stigger dominance of this event if we've seen a pair uh, take such control of the race and uh, maintain their composure their control and of course uh, their equipment with such care and attention that's the key here as well of course this event throws up so many obstacles and challenges for the physical side of it but uh, if you can manage your equipment uh, without any real problems then uh, this sort of thing will happen you can get into to control of the race is about being very much in control and riding under control and no risks means that there is less risk not only for the rider but also for the uh, equipment and riding on the limit just somehow just seems to uh, cause more issues more mechanical issues just a little bit less care is taken from the riding on the trail and avoiding those tiny possible obstacles because of course it only takes one rock to take half an hour out of your time and uh, having to repair can take uh, can really take tracts of time and ruin anyone's chances any team's chances of <clears throat> the overall general classification but no sign of uh, weakness here from the ghost factory racing team as they head into the finish they're no strangers to south africa they newbies at the race we have mentioned it before but they are well they are well traveled in this uh, western cape region they've ridden many of the trails in fact, they've won early season stage races for 2023 together, riding together, in fact. And the question was, in the last few years, just why have this pair not ridden the Absa Cape Epic? And they're answering it with a dominant performance in the women's the UCI women's category, the Aramex women's category and at the 2024 event. So Nicole Kohler has uh, given way to Anne Terpstra, who's taken uh, the lead here as they come onto the last bit of uh, trail up onto the banks of the dam. And uh, they have done this uh, time and again, and uh, they are putting uh, another firm, firm uh, nail into uh, their flag as the dominant team here, the Ghost Factory Racing Team. What a performance by the uh, Dutch and the Swiss rider. Uh, really been uh, utterly uh, dominant here. It really is uh, amazing.
Flawless in their riding, yep. flawless in their preparation. They've spent a lot of time here in South Africa. They certainly know the trails well, and their team manager, Thomas, will be waiting for them at the finish, and he'll be very pleased with yet another fantastic performance from them. There is just so much um, going on behind the scenes with the uh, top teams, and all the riders Terpstra and Collar have to do is pedal, and although that's no mean task, there's a lot of support that goes on in the background and they'll be as they'll be celebrated just as loudly with the team of Holla and Terpstra as they come to the finish. Here they come, Ghost Factory Racing, 33-year-old Dan Terpstra, 26-year-old Swiss partner Nicole Kohler have crossed the line and they have made it six out of six in the Absa Cape Epic in 2024. They retain the lead and they retain their hold, their dominant hold on the Aramex women's category. Fighting hard for every second, Candice Lill and Mona Mitivalna of Cannondale Factory Racing. They'll lose a few seconds to the overall leaders, but it'll probably stay under three minutes going into the last two stages. Another brave fight, but ultimately uh, undone again by a classy performance by Ghost Factory Racing, who have uh, made it uh, their own again today. Gap back around three minutes to the Toyota Specialized 91 team of Sofia Gomez, Viafan and Samara Shepard. When last we checked, it was uh, around three minutes. The gap between uh, Ghost Factory Racing and Cannonell Factory Racing at the finish, 20 seconds. So it is just under three minutes, the overall lead going into uh, stage six here as uh, they look ahead to the weekend's racing in the Absa Cape Epic. Well, the stats show it's a very slender lead, but uh, it, the body language and the racing shows that Ghost Factory Racing look very much in charge of this race. And there's absolutely no doubt that for the Ghost Factory team, it was the right decision to come here to do and, and compete in the Cape Epic. Um, six out of six wins, so it's a perfect, a perfect uh, number. Let's hear from uh, the stage winners down at the finish. Nicole, 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 congratulations again. Congratulations again. Full strike to go for this year. Strike to go for this year. Keep epic. I don't know. Like uh, so. Yeah, we, we, gave it, we gave it a go and uh, yeah, we, we came through with five, 5k to go just out of the single track and yeah, we, we tried to, to share the work until the finish and uh, yeah, it worked out amazing. I mean, every second will count uh, for GC, you gain a little bit of time again. Was that the goal as well or what was in mind when you start the stage this morning? Well, I think everybody expected us to attack where we attack now. Um, but we thought we'd just try and see if we can get a gap. It was not necessarily the goal to gain more time, but more to at least uh, come through safe and don't take any risks. Um, but of course it's nice when we can add some seconds to our, uh, to our lead. Did you have time to enjoy the stage riding on these trails? Yeah, like the, the trails, I, like we were training here and I already knew them a little bit. and. Yeah, they're just so cool to ride. It's so flowy and yeah, it's it's totally like cross country and yeah, just a lot of fun. I mean, only two two more stages to go. Uh, Stellenbosch area, you have been there many times. It's uh, an area with a, a lot of trails. Are you looking forward to the last two days? Yeah, I'm looking forward a lot. Uh, both days have amazing trails and we've been training there for years, so it will be so nice to finally race on them. And how do the legs feel at the end of this week? Yeah. In the beginning, oh, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday. Yeah, yeah now um, I think we are still feeling pretty good, and uh, yeah, hopefully the next two days will also be like that, and yeah, then we we just try to give our best for the next two days as well. Good luck for uh, tomorrow and Sunday stage. Thank you. Thank you. The thoughts there of our dominant uh, Ghost Factory Racing uh, team, Anna Terpstra and Nicole Kohler. And whilst they were chatting, so we saw Sofia Gomez Viafan and uh, Samara Shepard cross the line in third place on the stage. Three minutes and 43 seconds down on the, the stage, which will take them over 10 minutes adrift of the Ghost Factory Racing team.
on general classification. Well, these are unofficial time checks, but we have them pegged at 11 minutes and 39 seconds on general classification back. There are They're the stage. The, yeah, top three in the uh, women's Aramex uh, women's race, Anna Terpstra and Nicole Kola. Six out of six, a quite uh, supreme ride by them. Mona Mitavala and uh, Candice Lill. Well, they're hanging on and hanging in there. Lost 20 seconds today. That lead just uh, under three minutes on general classification. And uh, Gomez Villafan and uh, Samara Shepard in uh, third place today. So, as it has been uh, throughout this uh, race, just uh, the uh, top three teams have been uh, in those uh, top three places uh, throughout. So the men's uh, stage today saw Matthew Beers and Howard Grotz win their first stage of the race in the yellow jerseys of Toyota Specialized 91 by 12 seconds from Andreas Sirvold and Mark Stutzman of Canyon City. Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney lost 57 seconds, the World Bicycle Relief Team in second place at the start of the day. Jean and Uber had their best day of the week, Uber just losing a bit of power towards the end, 227 down. Villa Vittoria Factory, Fabian Rabbitstein and Samuel Poro, 321, not far behind them, but losing time, big uh, time. Hans Becking and Wart Allemann, the Israel yellow jersey wearers, having uh, won two stages. They uh, lost the yellow jerseys yesterday, and uh, they may well lose their position on the podium uh, if they continue going like this. That's the GC. At the moment, uh, they are, well, they've got a reasonable gap to Andreas Sivold, but uh, Mark Stutzman and Andreas Sivold are really going well. They found their legs late in the stage, late in the race, and Becking and Alleman are seemingly uh, depleting as this uh, week progresses. Not so Matt Beers and Howard Grotz. They have a uh, 2 minute and 57 second lead over Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney. Doesn't that set it up beautifully for stages 6 and uh, 7, the grand finale in Stellenbosch over the weekend. Two glorious days of uh, trail-led racing to uh, look forward to. Wellington is the uh, venue and uh, they bid farewell to Wellington. If you like, they did come back to it, of course, but it's the last stage in Wellington. And uh, this was the uh, start today. Alaman and Becking, as they do quite often, charge off the front. I think with a little bit of a smile on their face as they head off there. They certainly win the Team Spirit Award. And even smiling, they lost their yellow jerseys. They, had to, to, they held it for two days. And even when riding out of the yellow jersey, they still manage a smile, which is uh, it's really testament to their, their sportsmanship and their team spirit and their... Uh, just enjoying their week out. They love it here. And Hans Becking is a well-known exponent of the Epic Series races. And the new partner, Wout Allemann, certainly did him proud wearing that yellow jersey. The coveted Chievita yellow jerseys, and as you can see here, worn by the defending champion, the 2023 champion, and the 2018 champion, Howard Grotz. On the first section of single track roller coaster, the yellow jerseys, Beers and Grotz of Toyota Specialized 91, led out the second team on general classification, uh, World Bicycle Relief, Sebastian Finney in the Danish champion's jersey and uh, Nino Schurter. The sole rider here, Johan van Sale, his partner, Alex Miller, pulled out at the start of the race, allowing van Sale to continue on riding solo, but he was not allowed to uh, get involved with the racing at any stage in the race. Beers and Grotz uh, showing their intentions early on in this stage today to uh, make sure that uh, they could keep hold of those yellow jerseys. That two-minute gap back to uh, a two-time winner, the ten-time world champion, Nino Schurter. Well, you know you're going to have to work really hard to uh, keep that. Well, the early time checks, we saw that uh, the race really started to develop. And not only develop, but the but race, the, uh, the chasing teams were a little bit on the back foot. And uh, with the race concertining at this point, we did look to the likes of Canyon CD, and notably present was the Bulls Mavericks team, Urs Huber and Simon Schneller. Urs Huber, a last minute entry into the team. Simon Schneller calling him up really with uh, less than a week to go, arriving in South Africa, perhaps a little bit undercooked, but uh, looking to gain, uh, to make the most of a great week out in South Africa. Urs Huber, the uh, 2020, 60, uh, 2016 champion, and uh, Riding in the, at the very front of affairs. 
So the group started to uh, split with uh, Beer still on the front, dictating the pace. He is one of those riders who loves to be on the front of the race. And uh, the chase group behind working to try and minimize that gap and uh, make sure that they didn't lose too much time. But uh, it was uh, Alaman and Becking who were suffering today. They had the yellow jersey for two days in Tilbach. They lost it to Beers and uh, Graz yesterday. And uh, they were losing time again today. Schurter setting the, the early pace and trying to keep uh, him and uh, Sebastian Finney from losing too much time. And uh, Seerwald, the German champion, marathon champion, was in the picture. But uh, it was soon becoming apparent that uh, the uh, former Swiss champion and former winner here, Urs Huber, was starting to uh, take uh, a bit of heat. He and his partners, Simon Schneller of the Bulls Mavericks, were starting to lose touch with this elite lead, lead group as, uh, well, he loves the trails, does uh, the uh, world champion, former world champion, uh, the uh, Nino shirt, and he showed it and expressed it there. Down off the mountain, the Golden Mile, towards the finish, it was Beers and Grotz. Beers was clearly in great form and feeling very, very strong, and had uh, bolted ahead. Uh, Grotz was uh, chasing back to him, and Canyon City were the team behind them because World Bicycle Relief had lost time. And as they came into the finish at Wellington, it was Beers and Grotz of Toyota Specialized 91, who in the yellow jerseys win their first stage of this year's race. A 10th stage win for Beers, a second for Grotz in the history of the event. Canyon City crossed the line in second place to improve their hopes of perhaps moving up into the podium positions later in the week. And in third place were the World Bicycle Relief Third team. And then it was at Bulls, uh, Mavericks, but that's how they finished on the podium. Beers and Grotz on the top step, followed by Canyon City and World Bicycle Relief in third place. And uh, still in the yellow jerseys going into uh, stage number six, Beers and Grotz, they've improved their overall uh, lead now and will have a handy lead going into the uh, weekend's racing in Stellenbosch. The RMX women's race uh, headed off with the uh, Ghost Factory Racing Team leading by 2 minutes and 31 seconds over the Cannondale Factory Racing Team of Candice Lill and uh, Mona Mitevala, the Austrian the World Marathon Champion. Samara Shepard on the front, New Zealander based in Australia nowadays, but uh, she and Sofia Gomez Villafan some 7 minutes and 56 seconds off the uh, overall leaders going into today's stage. Uh, hoping against hope that things might fall in uh, place for them to gain some time on Cannondale and uh, Ghost, but uh, the Ghost Factory Racing pair in the uh, TV the Orange Leaders jerseys have been utterly dominant. They've won every stage going into stage number five here and have looked uh, totally uh, in control of this race in their first uh, time in the Absa Cape Epic. The group stayed together on the early slopes of uh, the wine farms here, the Hrunberg Mountain, uh, the uh, backdrop to today's uh, riding. And uh, early on, all the riders able to just uh, stay in touch. The pace perhaps not quite as frenetic as it has been uh, in the previous stages until later in the stage when things did, uh, when the uh, pace did increase. And also the weather was a little bit cooler than the uh, previous days we've seen and the temperatures rising only to, <laughs> just say only, but uh, in, the mid, in, the early t in the early 30s, and that was the prediction, but uh, still cool in the early morning riders enjoying just a bit of respite from the heat we've seen in the past couple of days. Mona Mitevala leading the uh, train down the roller coaster single track. Absolutely glorious sight. These uh, wild boar trails in Wellington, some of the best uh, anywhere in uh, the world. And uh, they got to explore most of them today. Candice Lill, who spent so much time on the front of this race, doing a work again. And uh, her partner, Mona Mitterwald is starting to find her legs late in the race, but it is the 22-year-old's first Absa Cape Epic journey and uh, finding the deep end of the race to be very, very testing indeed. Also really. finding it testing today was Samara Shepard. And uh, just in the, early, in the earlier part of the race, in the, and as the race started to really develop, the New Zealander just found herself struggling a little bit and uh, having to, her partner, Sofia gomez Villafan having to drop back with to uh, to her and leaving the top two teams to fight it out and it was always carbon copy over the last few days 
with these two teams fighting tooth and nail. And uh, Candice Lil and Mona Mitterwald are just wanting to just test their opposition to see where they are, to see if there is, in fact, any weakness in the armor. And unfortunately for the Canada Factory Racing, no weakness so far. And uh, almost for the first time in the, the uh, week, it was the South African champion, the Candice Lil, the silver medalist of the World Marathon Championships, who felt a bit of the pain today, uh, directed by Kola and uh, Terpstra, who never left uh, the uh, sharp end of the race. They just kept uh, putting the pressure on, slowly but surely opened the pace, and uh, the uh, pain was felt further back in the field by the Canada Factory racing pair. Kola and uh, Terpstra, two... Uh, extraordinarily skilled riders who have success at the highest level of the sport on the World Cup circuit. Minnenwalder tried there to get inside to go to, uh, into the uh, Golden Mile section in second place, but the door was shut uh, firmly by Ghost Factory Racing. They capitalized on that, bolted down the trail, and uh, put themselves in uh, prime position to pick up another stage win here, a sixth stage win, as they move towards the finish at Wellington. And the at the University of Technology uh, field. They opened a gap on the run to the line. And Terpstra and her partner, Nicole Kohler, six out of six for Ghost Factory Racing. They build on their lead as they look towards the finish in Stellenbosch with increasing optimism. They high five. They are still in control of this race. But Lil and Mittevalna will not give up fighting. The world champion, Mittevalna and Candice of Canada Factory Racing. And another brave fight by the Toyota Specialized 91 pair, former champion Sofia Gomez Viafan and her newbie partner Samara Shepard finishing in third place over three minutes back today. They are now 11 minutes back on general classification. The uh, racing today, uh, well, we made a, a little bit of a point of it. It wasn't quite uh, as on the on the limit as we've seen, but you can expect that as the, these riders going to uh, uh, the sixth day of a race like this. You, you definitely get more tired, mm. and it was maybe also just in a way to get a bit of breather uh, on today's stage before the next two hard stages uh, coming. Um, so we have we are now in, in Stellenbosch, and then it's definitely here the trails. There's a lot of up and down. We have more like um, sore teeth or sore tooth profile uh, the next day is still coming. Absolutely. Virtually uh, nothing flat after they've left the uh, Kutzenberg uh, playing fields here in Stellenbosch. They'll be playing out towards the northwest, uh, uh, out towards Marathi. They'll explore uh, uh, just so many wonderful trails in that Marathi area, courtesy of Marant Puerta. Uh, having gone over the Rusterburger, they go back uh, through Morgenhof, up through the Eiders Valley trails, Mottmuskop, uh, and then uh, the Doctor is a wonderful trail as they head down there. But yeah, that uh, is uh, our profile is an emphasis on the, how uh, uh, the sawtooth nature of this uh, trail. It really is going to be a real test uh, for uh, the riders on uh, stage number six and indeed stage seven. Here's the uh, profile for you. Well, the profile shows that uh, sawtooth that Sabine was talking about with some fantastic trails like the Full Metal Jacket and the Idas Valley Trails. Just uh, <clears throat> the highlight of the day, no doubt, is the Toyota Tap section, Methuselah. Marathi Trails, there are two water points in uh, Marathi. There'll uh, be great spectator support there, I'm sure. A weekend uh, as they go in and out of Stellenbosch, they go. Marathi. In fact, at two water points, they do a loop, double loop around those trails. 87 k's, 2,300 meters of climbing. That's on the menu for stage six. Four and a half chain rings on stage six of the Absa Cape Epic. A, uh, Grand finale waits here on the Sunday, but uh, they have to get through this day unscathed. And there's plenty of technical challenges uh, awaiting these riders. The trail builders in these parts of the world have uh, 
been building hand over fist over the last 10 years or so to complement the early trails. One of those early pathfinders and trailblazers was uh, Maran Puerta, who's responsible for most of tomorrow's uh, trail uh, network. And uh, well, he does an, a, an amazing job, and he's done a great job in uh, plotting this uh, route for tomorrow. And stage six, in fact, was described by the route designer, Hendrika Berger, as a sleeper day and one that could really catch the teams out tomorrow. So we're going to be watching carefully. It's packed with punchy single track climbs, and it's going to be all about positioning and getting to the right spot in the trails. And of course, if you're a marathoner and not a erstwhile cross-country rider used to those hard, sharp efforts, this might break the rider's rhythm and of course sap their energy. And uh, general classification changes uh, tomorrow for sure, but uh, Matt Beers today uh, with Howard Grotz looked very much in charge. Andreas Sievold and Mark Sturzman, a great performance from them again. In second spot, Nina Schurter, Sebastian Finney losing time of the day. They really wanted to consolidate today and potentially gain time on their rivals. They did put pressure on Matt Beers and Howard Grotz, but not to be Matt Beers and Howard Grotz rose to the occasion and took the stage. Schneller and, and uh, Huber, they looked, they were wanting to capitalize in that front group, capitalize on the, the agenda of the overall general classification, but Chris Huber just not able to stay in touch with that lead group as we climbed up to the Golden Mile section. Fabian Rabenstein, another better day for them. So him and Samuel Poro, only three minutes, 21 down. Perhaps uh, we'll see them surge again in the latter half of uh, the race, which is tomorrow. Two big days tomorrow. And the general classification going into stage five. Matt Beers, Howard Grotz look more dominant than ever before as Nina Schurter and Sebastian Finney lost 57 seconds today. Now just under three minutes down. Still very close. But Hans Becking and Wout Allemann, another loser, losing team of the day, now slipping down... Uh, not slipping down the leaderboard, but uh, looking very much under threat from Andreas Seervolt and Mark Stutzman. They've been riding at the front, Canyon CD, and living up to their promise, the former world champion and current German champion and the Swiss champion riding together, George Faker and Lucas Baum, also losing time today, slipping down the leaderboard behind Andreas Seervolt. Ravenstein and Poro in sixth spot. Not really a huge threat to, over to overall, certainly not, but the win but still all in contention for a top five finish. And in the women, Anna Terpstra and Nicole Koller absolutely dominant in this category, and they hardly look like they've put a foot wrong. Mona Mitovolna and Candice Hill have been putting pressure on them today, having lost 20 seconds. Terpstra and Koller just uh, showing their racing pedigree and just taking that last technical section, the Golden Mile section, putting a bit of a gap of in, into the Cannondale factory racing team and making it count. Sofia Gomez, Villafana and Samara Shepard falling off on one of the earlier climbs and losing three minutes and 43. Still a third spot overall, for the, uh, third spot on the stage for them. Great performance. Another great performance from Lena Giroux and Haley Preen. 10 minutes back and looking very much to hold on to that fourth spot overall. The general classification Anna Terpstra, they put more time into their rivals. Mona Mitovalna and Candice Lill, two minutes and 51 seconds, putting further time into them today. And Sofia Gomez Villafana losing time today with uh, Samara Shepard, now 11 minutes and 39 seconds down. E4 to private client holdings, 11, one hour and 13 minutes and 29 seconds down. Quite close behind is Vera Lorza and Lexa Skada and Natalia Fischer and Narita Luchel Schwab in sixth spot. It's all set up for a great weekend of racing here in uh, Stellenbosch. Uh, Sabina, I think you'd like to be riding this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the trails they are amazing here in Stellenbosch. Um, <laughs> but I mean, also the, the, the previous days. Also, I, I also really enjoy yeah. the trails in Wellington. They are, they are just amazing. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it's just here you have uh, the opportunity to really play. Um, not that like the racers, like, I mean, it's it's hard work and uh, the, the, the legs are burning, they're tired. And uh, whenever, like, 
another ro uh, another team is is putting a bit of hammer down and uh, put put some pressure on the pedals, you 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 you're also questioning why yeah. can't you just can't just, just play just, for just, today? Just can't we just sit, have some fun? Just sit. <laughs> <laughs> There's a confirmation of the South Africa jersey. You saw the amateurs and the NTT uh, Data Masters. No changes there and no change here either. Marco Joubert and Vessel Buerta 19 minutes uh, in. But uh, Matthijs Bierkes and Rousseau Becker now onto the podium in the South African uh, jersey. In Buko are suffering a little. They were the first wearers of that South uh, African jersey. Podium uh, for stage oh, five of the Absa Cape five, Epic in the Aramex uh, women's category. And uh, stepping up, uh, well, it's the same three teams we've uh, seen for every day so far. We might have changed once or twice, but it is uh, Sofia Gomez Viafan and uh, Samara Shepard onto the uh, top step. Sofia's well, the brothers riding the race as well. Julian riding uh, on his own. Is he who got him in? Who got her into uh, mountain biking? And the national champion of South Africa, alongside the world champion Austria's Mona Mitterwalder, in the second place. And where they've been, uh, they've uh, colonised that top step. Uh, they go, uh, Nicole Collin and uh, Terpstra are winners of stage number five for Ghost Factory Racing. Dominant throughout. The podium for the Aramex women's uh, category for uh, stage five of uh, this around, race. We're going to do the presentation of our overall and leaders. The presentation of the uh, GB to Orange leaders' jerseys very shortly. Well, irrigation going on, uh, the intense heat here in uh, Wellington. Those uh, vines will be uh, very, very uh, happy with the uh, irrigation. It's harvest time as well, it's one of the busiest times of the year for this part of the world. So uh, a big thank you to the landowners, to the farmers in this part of the world, allowing this uh, race to traverse their lands whilst they are still working so, so hard. I know some of the farmers have been, uh, some are riding and they've tried to get uh, training in whilst uh, harvesting and working uh, so hard. It takes a huge toll on uh, body, mind and spirit, but uh, they're still fighting hard. So wonderful that to be able to explore these parts of the world. Thanks so on to the, the, uh, the DS the step, the our overall in leaders in the Aramex women's category. They won the prologue, stages one, two, three, four, and now stage five, and are worthy, worthy holders of the TV to orange leaders jerseys at the 20th Absa Cape Epic. Goes back to racing, Anna Terpstra and Nicole Kohler once more are in orange. And Proteas, their favourite flowers. And also thank you, Aramex, for your support. Okay, of the of, uh, beautiful Proteas. And uh, of course, another big uh, collection. They've got, uh, they'll need to uh, create another extra luggage. Extra luggage, send those back by ship because they've got so many of the Aramex. Uh, Mascots, but well done, Nicole Kola and Anne Turpster. Well, it's been another fantastic day, stage five of the uh, Absa Cape Epic. We're down to the weekend. It's Stellenbosch beckons for the much. riders so and for all of you. It's going to be sensational. Thanks very much to uh, Sabine, to Neil, and to uh, our man's men out on the route. Till tomorrow, goodbye.
This is Wellington, our race venue for two full days as the 20th edition of the Absa Cape Epic reaches its halfway stage. Four days done, four to go. And in many eyes, perhaps the four most telling and uh, difficult stages of this entire journey. At the sharp end, we've got racing out of the very top draw and as close as it has ever been at the uh, top of both the men's and women's races. We're in for a fantastic day's racing today. It's the Queen stage. Thank you.